You get to the, the fun part? Yeah. It's going to be more, of course, here. a lot of blood, violence, blood, guns violence, involved blood. as well. And it's very gritty. And it's a different feel compared to what the other MC, MCU stuff that we've seen. <laughs> oh, <it's> <laughs> uh, Ooh, uh, flip. I learned a long time ago that there's no sense getting all riled up every time a bunch of idiots give you a hard time. In the end, the universe tends to unfold as it should. Plus, I have a really large penis. That keeps me happy. Now, what it got here is a scrotum and nothing else. By the way, Tommy Lou. I caer gwannar na valano si bado no kirar. Vagina. In a swamp shower where the trailer's standing line Frodo's in the mud drinking homemade shine Bilbo's on the porch telling tales all day long Everything was quiet till the ring came along Can I Frodo up on his mule named Joe Said the ring's trouble, we gotta hit the road With the swamp behind and the mountains ahead We're just good old boys doing what Gandalf said Frodo's carrying the ring and it's dragging slow But we're marching through the mud with a steady flow They're a going to track a hunting coons at night Game the swinging axe, but his aim ain't right Legolas is prepping, shooting buds off logs Harwin's painting toenails, yelling at the dogs Saruman's a neighbor's always causing grief Scheming in his tower like a backwoods thief With the swamp behind and the mountains ahead We're just good old boys doing what Gandalf said Frodo's carrying the ring and it's dragging slow But we're marching through the mud with a steady flow Feeling rough, that rain's getting mean Sam's frying up catfish, keeping Frodo lean Boromir's all tangled, lost in the dark Galadriel's telling fortunes in the back of her yard Gone's that we're cousin, we don't bring to town But he's family, so we keep him around With the swamp behind and the mountains ahead We're just good old boys doing what Gandalf said Frodo's carrying the ring and it's dragging slow But we're marching through the mud with a steady flow
It's not Friday, but I wanted to play that anyway. What the f is up, everybody? I'm by myself. I'm lonely. No one's here. There, I've been abandoned. I've been abandoned by my producer, X-Ray Girl, who had to go get her nails done with Kara for some event tonight, whatever. And Chris is uh, probably taking an old man piss and getting some coffee. So he'll be here in about an hour. <laughs> I see him right there. What's up? Hey, man. Hey. I, was, <laughs> I know. It's I okay. was having technical problems. I'm going to fire my whole staff. Yeah, exactly. My exactly. Staff just me. Just, Your just staff me. of you. Well, yeah, you can, I mean, only. you could ceremonially like fire Alan Ng just for fun. And uh, then, yeah. I'll, and then rehire him. The and then rehire day. him the next day. Yeah. I think we I can do that. Alan. Yeah. Dude, it's my been so long. I missed you. How are you? Oh my God. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Watched your adventures. I got to say, like, wait, how is your lip? It's better. It, better. It's like healed. Yeah, it was it was horrible. Like I, for okay for for a white guy, I got pretty big lips, right? So um, <laughs> and and it grew like two sizes. It, it like swelled up because uh, the genius me, I put like uh, I normally don't put on sunscreen. I just don't. Mm -hmm. But when you're at eleven thousand feet, you need to do it. So we let. But I didn't put any on my on my lips, and dude, they got fried. They got fried. So uh, it it was a little like hard that. to talk. <laughs> Something like that happened to a friend of mine at San Diego Comic-Con, laying out by the Marriott pool. The bottom of his feet got a sunburn. I've never heard of this. He was in pain. It was bad. I mean, we were all laughing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got, like, it. it they, they warned us. They said, like, it, the sun hits different up here, so cover everything. You know, uh, I got sunburn on my ankles. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was nuts. But it was fun. It was so much fun. It was kind of a life changing experience, seeing you know go, going down there, and uh, you know a country like ideally when I was growing up I never thought I'd even go to right until I got into this ancient civilization stuff and it was like it was the perfect vacation. We had the perfect group. We were with Michael Collins from Wandering Wolf. You might if you're in the ancient civilization sphere, you might know him from the Sage Wall. They used some of his drone footage in the last Ancient Aliens for Puma Puku. He's a good dude. He's based, and he'll be at the meetup tonight, by the way, if anybody wants to meet him. And he just interviewed Graham Hancock. Wait, so, we, wait a second. Are we live? Yeah, of course we are. I didn't know. I thought this is our. <laughs> oh, I probably should have. I probably should have told you. <laughs> oh my God. I, almost I started said the show. I almost said a few things. Did you see the message I sent you last night? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. That's we'll crazy. Talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I was at dinner with Ryan. Ryan saw the message too. So, <laughs> my feeling is, it'll stuff will leak on Reddit. Uh, I think if they're, leak. it's weird. Well, I mean, this is it's kind of an early test screening. Yes. We won't say what movie it is, but it's kind of early. It's kind yeah, of early. Uh, this friend of mine who you have met, he yes. said. He gets regularly invited to the WB ones. He said he's likely to see a three-hour cut. Oh, He'll see an early cut with lots of footage that they cut mm. down. I don't know how that. Yeah, I don't know how that. Like I'm part of, part of me wants to see a three-hour movie, and part of me doesn't. So yeah, well, sounds like some fence setting shit right there. Sorry, but uh, I was I rewatched the Batman. I forgot that thing was three hours. Oh, Good thing I was on like a seven-hour flight. So yeah. Uh, and we'll talk about the penguin. But yeah, we got some stuff to talk about. Like so you see in the title, Hollywood needs to shut the fuck up. Uh, and they really do. Yes. And and we'll explain why. Chris probably doesn't even know the context and knows exactly where we're gonna go with that. Why this year in particular, they just need to sit it out and shut the fuck up. If they if I they think, want an industry at all. I think people are fed up. I think yeah. people that Zachary Levi clip, which I hope you play. We will play um, that and something else. Yes. People are fed up because most of Hollywood, let me just explain this. Most of Hollywood, in particular, below the line people, camera people, craft services, uh, you know, the guys, gaffers. These are just the grunts working on a crew are based. They're based. Yes, they are. Not really political. They're not really, they don't have the luxury to champion social causes, you know. But to be clear, we are. Less than two weeks away 
than the the media declaring Kamala Harris as is our first woman president. The media will declare that in less than two weeks. D- despite what they it? despite what they see on the TV. <laughs> Look, don't let facts get in the way. Well, it has it hasn't media. stopped the corporate media in the past. I, I will I I completely agree with you there, Chris. I don't know. I remember the last uh, election when uh, Biden was like trotting out. He did that sort of jog, and it's like there was nothing. They just decided it's Saturday, or, or was it Saturday or Friday? It was like let's just say that it happened. So remember yeah. that? Yeah. Oh yeah. I saw it live. I I, I remember everything from those days. Um, and you know, culturally, even just uh, believe it or not, despite what happens a couple of weeks from now, culturally things are changing, things are shifting, uh, back into a more sane direction, which is all we've ever wanted over this past almost decade. Um, but the system is not going to go down easy and the state will not go down easy, but I mean, we got to think, you got to think, I was told to let this go, Chris, on Friday. Right. Uh, kind of kind of lit a fire under my ass. Oh, uh, I heard you. I, I ain't fucking letting COVID, the response <laughs> to COVID go, ever. Um, but I, the one thing I want to thank it for is is it did truly, even people who got the jab and p- believed differently before, so many more people now believe differently. They've opened their eyes to the truth. And we can't really get on their ass too much because most of these people are working they don't watch television every day they catch little pieces of of the news when they're at the gym or at the, at an airport or something like that and they're busy raising their family so i'm not going to sit there and just shit on everybody about it but there is a point where you got to wake up and they did and a lot of people did and i'm thankful for that i'm grateful for that at least something good came out of what was fucking horrible what was absolutely a travesty that we were watching over uh, those few years, and uh, yeah, so we've got more people just waking up, and I think that's incredibly good. Uh, we have a long ways to go, though, long ways to go, and it's it, like this isn't gonna fix itself in four years, and maybe not in our generation. There's so much damage was done, but you got to start somewhere, and this is, I think, this is the start. Like for for Hollywood, for entertainment, anyway, this is definitely the year. Like woke died. Like yeah. this is definitely the year. Thank fucking God. Um, now they can keep making it, but it's just going to keep failing and that's fine. But like, they're starting to pick up that when we make a normal movie, people go like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but did well, did well. Cause it was just a normal movie. We'll, we'll talk about the actor in it in just a second. Ah, uh, cause he just fucking kicked himself in the balls, but, too um, too bad like Michael Keaton, but you know, adult pretenders are adult pretenders, even the ones we like. Uh, but yeah, uh, back from Peru, back to normal schedule. We have a big meetup tonight at, uh, seven o'clock Ricky Bobby's. I think there's a few RSVPs left. Uh, I'm sure Eric will be in there or other mods will put the link. And I think the link's in the description and x-ray girls getting her nails done. Is it, it really? Yeah. I let her She's go. Getting, oh she, my. She, the girls are going out and doing their girl stuff and like the girls need to do the girl stuff once in a while. That okay. guinea pig eating Asian woman. Yes. I can't <laughs> believe it. I can't believe it. No. Oh my God. Those pictures. I was, I was, I was, I, I'm going to say I was a little grossed out. I was grossed out. Oh, you should not... imagine being there, dude. <laughs> oh, you didn't eat it. Did you? Oh, hell no. I had spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like, I'm like, I'm going to have carbs tonight while you guys oh. are eating that. But yeah, they take a guinea pig and they skin it and they stick a stick up its ass and then they like rotisserie fry it or some something whatever they do and it's like got to be prepared and it's a very special delicacy in Peru that you have on holidays or something like that and everybody liked it. They said it tastes like chicken. Melissa said it was too salty or whatever, but uh, everybody seemed to like it and uh, they devoured it and then they put the heads of the guinea pigs on a plate and they named them all by the way like Sebastian <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was disgusting. Uh, but the other food in Peru is pretty good. Alpaca. Is Alpaca good? is good. Yeah, it tastes like like beef. It tastes like steak. I don't know. I'm a steak. They're kind of nasty chicken. anyway. So I'm a steak, chicken, pork guy. I had venison once when I was in London. Venison's good. 
and it was kind of gamey. Mm-hmm. As they say, it's like chewy. Needs to be gamey. prepared well. Yeah. Dude, you know what they do in their steaks in Peru? They cook them. I didn't ask for a well done steak, and I got the most perfect well done steak I've ever had. I'm more of a medium rare guy. I I'm like a, pink on the well inside, done. so to speak. Like well I like my women. Anyways. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, yeah. chat. Hi, chat. I see you guys there. I see you guys there. Uh, Psychotic Mongoose, Nick Brony, uh, Universe. Uh, what is that? Universanity. I like that name. It took me a second to get there, but I like it. It's kind of like nerdrotic. Like Jeremy still yeah. can't say ner- He says nerdrotic. Like there's a J or in there or something. <laughs> uh, Piddly Woodley, one of the mics. Uh, Smeagoli. It says Smeagoli. Paul Anderson. Chelsea M. What's up, Eric K? What are you saying? What did you say right there? Uh, Gary, they were eating rat without a tail. You're right. I mean, it was a freaking rat. What's up, Eric? Uh, You're right. Frosty Film Watcher, Joseph Dunley, everybody else, hail to the fellowship. Uh, Smoo, are you here, Smoo? Did you make it? I hope you made it. We have a lot of people uh, converging on San Antonio. I think drunk 3PO's here. I had dinner with Ryan and... Kara and uh, X-Ray Girl uh, last night. It was it was quite nice. And I guess Ryan went out and partied because that's what he does. And I went to bed after watching yeah. YouTube because I'm an old man. Oh, I, I was hearing time for me. Like, he was out there at some courtyard where there was nobody. It was kind of boring. Well, yeah, so. dude, that's why I, I picked San Antonio because it's kind of a boring town. It's kind of a just a, it's wow. a normal suburban boring town. And I couldn't afford to live in the country and have 80 Starlinks because my job is kind of connected to the internet. Uh, I mean, I could have moved to the country, but my internet would have sucked. So, now, yeah. It's, it's chill. It's boring. not Austin. <laughs> it's boring, maybe with the exception of Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes. Is, is that real? Uh, yes and no. It's not four. It wasn't four. Um, we do have a cringe horrible sheriff and again I, it was funny i got a super chat because i was going off on the sheriff and the guy sent it sent in a super chat and he's like gary's been in texas two years and he wants to run the sheriff out of town you're right <laughs> i yes. do bear county sheriff so if you're in bear county which i was calling bexar because it's that's how it's spelled but it, you say it bear i don't fucking know uh bear county uh has the lamest sheriff in the country so if you live here Vote for your dog, vote for your cat, vote for your mom, uh, vote for your uh, wife's boyfriend. I don't care. But do not vote for this sheriff, uh, the incumbent. Vote for anybody else. Get him out of office. He's a fucking twat. He uh, he wanted to press charges on Ron DeSantis for um, flying the the immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. Oh, I love that. And that was within like two weeks. And I, yeah, it's different. But uh, uh, a San Antonio cop shooting a kid eating a cheeseburger in his car but this fucker's worried about that shit it's like we got other things to worry about like getting better cops maybe getting better cops and admittedly i don't have a very good relationship with sheriffs in the past i've been arrested (laughs) by a lot of them and booked by a lot of them and kept in jail by a lot of them but uh yeah there's some good sheriffs out there uh chris Let's start. Well, I got to find, I, I have to do this all on my own. So it's going to take time. Let's start. Oh, by, the, by the way, I'm not caught up. I haven't seen Penguin. I, oh. I feel so horrible. It's okay. Um, so Mahler no, no. and As like, liked the episode, but it wasn't their favorite. I kind of liked it more than they did. Mm-hmm. I liked it more than they did because it shifted back to the Penguin. So it, it shifts right back to the Penguin on that one. Uh, it still has a potential. To go like that. Everything does. Like House of the Dragon, I was really enjoying <laughs> until they gave us that the blue balls. It's still a good season of television, but um, there's a character that needs to go. It's it's still like in my top five. But uh, Penguin is still number two for me, Chris Gore, because the number one show for me is The Gentleman. I heard that. I heard you say that. Uh, and I still have not seen it, but now I have to. You have I'll, to. Over, the, over the holidays, I will catch up on everything. It's a good excited. holiday watch. It's a good holiday watch. You'll it's tons of it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's really good, slick, and fun. That's the kind of shit I like. 
and Susie Glass. You want to talk about this year has been a good year for the the female mobster. So we have Sophia and Susie uh, from those two, and they're fucking great. Like that's like it's so lame that we have to say like that's how you do a female character. You have her act like a girl. Yeah, you have her, you have her act like a, a really fucking intelligent woman who has to, you know, has to use her brain to to. W- weave around all this gangster shit and does it really well, that's fucking great. That's how you do it. And the fact that we have to say that out loud shows you how bad things are in Hollywood. Not a good year for musicals. It, not a no. good year for and Was there another I, musical besides Joker 2? Uh, no. Joker 2 but, should be uh, enough. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right. That's, but Wicked, I am... Mm. I'm starting to hate that movie. Like... Like and I, I love the play. I've been. I know it sounds super gay, but uh, the play and you've seen it too. So you're. Uh, I have. Gay. Yeah, you're gay now. Um, you're gay now. Um, no, uh, because I, I was simping for uh, what's her name, Alphaba, Alpha, yeah. Alphabet, Alphaba. Alpha. Yeah, because the the woman playing Alphaba in the San Francisco production was was smoking hot. But it, it, the original is about just feeling different and out of place and not being accepted. And it's universal because everyone feels that. And now they have made this, made this movie version, by the way, part one, there's another part coming and I'm sure part one is two and a half hours. Um, they've made it about race. They have of course. Made it explicitly about race. And I, I hate that, that, um, it's so exclusionary in a way. Yeah. Where the originals, a universal story and this they well, made, I, it's again, I think, you know, this year you've declared, which is now a, a fact, uh, the death of wokeness it happened this year. And, but too many other movies were made or in production. So it's going to take a while to die off in entertainment. Yeah, it is. Uh, my hot take is, um, I don't care. I mean, because Alphaba's green, so I don't give a shit who plays her. It's just like you couldn't find, couldn't have found a better looking woman to do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you. I don't I'll care what a, color she is. I'll give you a quick tease of that one, I, hit, that one. Hit the ugly tree of every branch of the ugly tree on the way down. Yeah, yeah. But I got, I'll give you a quick tease of um, what Alan and I are talking about on uh, Hollywood on the Rocks, but. You, you're well aware, and you've reported on, we all have, the contraction of the industry, right? It's contract. It's yeah, gotten yes. smaller. It's shrinkage, for sure. Only 20% of productions are even being done in California. They're all over, right? Yep. Only one in five. So um, what that is, Alan overheard a conversation. This, what uh, amongst a bunch of, he wasn't, he was somewhere he wasn't supposed to be. And overheard, and I'll let him tell the story. But I, the, the I, that shit. happened to me once too. I got arrested. <laughs> well, <laughs> he maybe he could have, but he was in a group of people. Maybe they didn't know who he was. They were prominent people. I'll let him say, uh, basically saying that there's a purge in Hollywood, and the purge is of a certain type of thinking that they they want serious minded people who are here to to build up the industry so that it continues and other types of people that may have an, an agenda in mind. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, they, they're getting little by little purged and encouraged to, after not working and encouraged to maybe find another type of work. This was the whole conversation. Like, so the, the Hollywood purge is about the industry has shrunk. The activist types are just kind of kind of going to have to find something else to do. Because Hollywood's getting back to the business of making films that appeal and making movies that make money. I'll say this year has been not a great year. Whatever you think of last year, at least there were some, some, I mean, and the, be, I mean, this year is kind of there isn't that big movie where you can say this is going to win the Oscar. There isn't one. I can tell you I haven't seen it. 
No, it's like, in, yeah, the, 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 yeah, there's no Oppenheimer out there or even some right. independent movie. Uh, I, mean, I mean, no, you're right. There's no like runaway like this is winning it for sure. There isn't. And by the way, people are saying this is going to getting too into the weeds. There's a movie called Honora that came out from a guy named Sean Baker. He did a movie called The Florida Project with Willem Dafoe. Don't know if you remember it, but Honora has explicit sex and nudity. And they're already saying it's going to get Oscars. This will be like the second year in a row, like a movie that is basically a softcore porn. Okay. It has gotten like the last year was poor things. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, you know. Uh, uh I did one. I did not, so I will not comment on it because <laughs> uh, I did okay. not see it, Chris. <laughs> there was a lot of debate. The one thing you can't debate, I mean, it, it there's explicit sex, full yeah. frontal. I mean, uh Emma Stone's hoo-ha, and uh the woman who plays Anora, you see everything, and there's a lot of sex and nudity in the movie. What does it say about Hollywood that these are the films that are, you know, getting the most recognition, right? Like it's, it's very strange. Um, and all, I, along with the substance, which I love, which I told your wife to see, I don't know how she feels about that now. <laughs> uh, I know I scarred, I know I scarred Steph. That's Steph. Sure. <laughs> I said, go watch the fly. It's kind of body horror, like the fly. It's very good. I, love um, the fly. I know it's not for everyone, but you know, Demi Moore might get nominated. Yeah. As well. I think like, that's probably the one that's going to win a lot. Right. Or at least be nominated for a lot. That it feels and like Honora, it. It's like when the mainstream hot and I love these movies personally, but when mainstream moviegoers see these films that have really explicit sex, what does that say about what Hollywood is, you know, revering or you know uh giving the most recognition in terms of awards it's it's um it says something so we'll see I, I, it's a mixed bag of a year and this year is really off to me i think the the fourth quarter slate is weak although i did see i don't know if you saw this gary the popcorn bucket for Gladiator Two. Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw it. I'm. I got. I gotta get this. It's movie. a coliseum that uses augmented reality. You point your phone at it, and a gladiator fight takes place in the. I I, I kind of want one. Oh, I speaking of good one. good packaging, ladies. Yeah. Mahler showed me um American Psycho 4K, that's got um inside the liner. It's got blood, so. Oh, it, that was I'm like, nice. th that is the coolest shit I've ever seen. Um, I love that. Oh, shit. Venom's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. No, I got tickets. I got to go see it. I got to find a way it, to go I'm see not, it. I think you get a free poster or something. Uh, you know what I did with my Joker two poster? I threw it in the trash. <laughs> threw it in the trash. Uh, but So what you're saying is the Oscars redemption art is they're going to start handing out Oscars for boobs, which I am for. I am for the nature is healing. Yes. Nature I, I, is healing. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I don't know about mainstream audiences. You know, it that, depends on like the usage of the boobage. Yeah. Well, substance, man, there's a lot of Demi Moore, man, for 61. Holy hell. If you she did like some. French Amazing. art house film of just Sydney Sweetie sitting in a chair for two hours, like naked, it would win Best Picture and make $10 billion. Side thought, because we're both ADD, how different would Marvel be if Sydney Sweeney played Captain Marvel? It would be different. Uh, that, that, but that's been the argument. Like, uh, ultimately, when you get down to the bottom line, Brie Larson was horribly miscast as Captain Marvel. That, like, we also have to count that the 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 screenwriters were shit, the directors were shit, the whole plot was shit, the hero's journey sucked. But um, some of us actually liked Miss Marvel, Carol Danvers, when she was in the comics. Yeah, and uh, she was uh, she she was kind of fun. Uh, they, they gave her problems later, like alcoholism, but like what she's most known for is, you know, getting her power sucked by rogue. But, um, no, we like, she had her own comic series. She was fine. 
If you uh, I, at the time we said Katie Sackoff, Katie Sackoff would have been better on the red carpet. She's way more charming. She has a good podcast, and and like that's the complete picture you're gonna need in Hollywood now for a. I can't even say celebrity for an actor, for an adult pretender. Is you're going to need somebody who's kind of a got a, a five tool player. You need a five tool player, and not just on the casting couch. Okay, you need somebody who can give good interview, <laughs> give good interview, uh, and and not insult the audience. Do some basic shit, and that takes uh, a certain amount of intelligence, right? And uh, yeah, I think say, it would have been a completely different story. But if she plays Black Cat. Felicia Hardy, fuck yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I'd be down. Um, but I'm Brie Larson is just unlikable. Yeah. She really, I don't know. I feel like she surrounded herself with the wrong people, like Rachel Zegler, these people that are in their ear because they're pretty vapid people, right? So they're the culmination of, you know, the people they hang around with the most, just you know, echoing certain ideas they heard kind of understand, but don't really know. It's like people who read the headlines, but don't read the whole article or don't know context or whatever. Um, or, or, but, know, yeah. or, or know how to say a simple thing. Like if you're asked some leading gaslighting question, all you have to say is, Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. You're allowed to, I, now I feel very comfortable not having opinions about things. I yeah. don't know. about. I just, I don't know. I don't. Whereas I won't call it any, but there are people who this is some places, somewhere on YouTube. There are people that have a lot of opinions, but they haven't seen the thing or watched the thing. And I'm like, I can't take you seriously. I, you have to see the thing, then come down with an opinion. I'm good. Cool with that. Yeah. It's I don't okay. care what the opinion is. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the side of like, commenting on red carpet and stuff like that. And that's all we you have at the, yeah, absolutely. But once the thing comes out, I think it's, and if you're covering pop culture, I think it's really important to watch the thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's why I usually I'm on, on most stuff. I just wait to watch the movie. Right. So that's what I did with Joker. Right. I waited to watch the movie and I watched I, the movie. I was, I mean, I kept hearing it wasn't great. And then I was like, well, let's wait. Let's, and it was very clear in the first you know, 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah. 10, 15 yeah. minutes. Like, uh, and I felt the same way. I'm like, well, I heard that about the first one too, especially from, right. from the critics. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll go, I'll go check it out. But yeah, it was pretty clear. Once I saw uh, the dude that was going to be the Joker and I knew he was the Joker, I'm like, oh, this is not going to be good. Yeah. And that was so freaking obvious. And the fact that it was because it was obvious. It was like, well, if I'm figuring out, everybody's figuring this out. So, and we're just waiting for it to happen. Uh, but back to Hollywood is, it, they purged themselves. We talked about this during the strike. And it wasn't like you had to be some kind of genius to figure it out. It was, this is an industry that has been lying to itself for the past half decade. They've been yeah. lying about their numbers. They've been lying about audiences. They've been lying about their actual productions. Um, and this is stuff they got away with for a long time prior to super corporate Hollywood. The problem is you can't lie yourself into success. You can't guilt people into watching your movie. Uh, as a matter of fact, it does quite the opposite. And the one thing every single one of these articles misses is Hollywood's act outside of Hollywood and how much damage it's done to their brand. And uh, it, it bears repeating often because they, they know it now. They, there's no way they don't know it. They just refuse to say it. And there's that until they acknowledge that it's like, it's like an alcoholic until you acknowledge you have a fucking problem. It ain't going to change. So you can think of every other excuse in the world. And some of them are valid, but your, your, your foundation is the paying customer the audience, you have made half of them minimum mad. So now you have to charge more to fewer people, charge higher ticket prices to fewer people. And now it's finally starting to be talked about like, oh, ticket sales are actually down. Like you'll see billion dollar movies, but ticket sales, actual sales to human beings are down. And, and I saw this in the comic industry for fucking two decades. We just saw the audience shrinking 
So we started making more variants and charging more for the comics, and it, it doesn't grow your industry. Oh, and then they started like, oh, we can't put comics in 7-Elevens. Uh, and what are they doing? They're shutting down theaters or they're they're shortening the windows for the like the same thing happened when, uh, with comics, Chris. It was chasing the trade. It was like, let's make four single issue comics to put it in a trade and we'll, we'll just and people will just go, I'll wait for the trade. And then they got tired of waiting for the trade. And then everything was a trade and it wasn't special anymore. And it, like right. it, that's that's what's. That's exactly what's fucking happening with the movie theater. They shorten the release window. Oh, we'll just wait for streaming. And then ah, maybe I'll get around to it. Maybe I won't when it gets on streaming and nobody makes any money. Wild Robot, which was very good. Very good, simple, you know, fun animated movie from DreamWorks is out in theater still. Also on digital. But I have a couple comments. One, uh, the French often don't do many things right. In fact, mostly wrong. The one thing they do right, they don't rank films by money. They rank by admissions. And they even count if a critic, a movie critic, goes to a free screening of a movie, it's counted. Because they want to gauge the most popular film, who saw movies the most. This whole thing of box office and report, how do you compare it to Star Wars in 1977? I mean, and, and all of those things are an educated guess and it's fine, but it's not a real gauge. So the whole box office, hey, it did this, it did that. It's, it's better to count the admissions. Fewer and fewer people are going to the movies. And I will say this, I saw a really interesting, I don't know if you follow Bridget Fetisy. Do you know who she is? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, yeah. She's great. I listen to her. She's fun. She's she's been naked on the internet. I can't believe that. Um, don't look it up. She said that the Democrats have bud lighted their brand. So the brand of a Democrat is like they did what happened to Bud Light, right? It's more for women. It's this. They've alienated black men, like are the most. I mean, it's it's horrible what they've done. But what I'm saying is also that I'm going to tie it in. It all comes back. Hollywood has done the same thing. Hollywood has bud lighted their brand where Hollywood is no longer trusted. And you won't just go see a movie because you'll question before you decide. Right. I mean, yep. is that a fair comparison? Absolutely. Yeah. No, they, 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 uh, when, when you've done brand damage, it's, um, it's something that's almost impossible to come back from unless you find like some serious humility, which I, I don't think Hollywood is capable of. And you're absolutely right, by the way, Chris, I was just in agreement with you with, uh, we, we, we said a long time ago when this, uh, a alienation of the male was going on in Hollywood, uh, they tried to affix it to the white males. Like, no, no, it's the male, the male. And, and one of the, uh, I hate identity politics. Hate it so much, Dang. but you would notice that there was uh, for a long time in television there was the effeminate black guy, the non-threatening black male. Yeah. Well, that was that was you know that's that's the bigotry of low expectations. That is the bigotry on display. Uh, I'll never forget um, you know Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider, right? It's like so you're gonna make a okay fine you're gonna make a a, a Latin American. Ghost Rider. But, of course, his brother has gang affiliations and he works in a garage. It's like, come on. Why couldn't you just be a... You know, it's like, they can't help themselves. And they go, well, this is the authentic Mexican-American experience in Los Angeles. I'm like, not for everybody, no. Not not necessarily. Like, it ain't the 70s. It ain't the 60s. Uh, it's That's the kind of bullshit we've been trying to fight. And here we are. It's the alienation of the male, of just masculinity. And when we were talking about this five years ago, we were called everything, everything under the sun for going, no, it, I'm not going to apologize for being a dude. I'm not going to apologize for having testosterone or testosterone. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to, this is how I'm built. Okay. By nature, by God, fuck you for calling all of it, uh, for calling all of it toxic. And, and like, we told you this was going to bite you in the ass. And now it's biting you in the ass. Well, the majority of ticket buyers that go to the movies were men. It yes. was 
traditionally men go to the movies, women watch TV. So a lot of TV is feminized and hallmarked or whatever, you know, the kind of stuff. And that that's fine, you know, but when you take your core audience and I, it's weird because you'll even see if there's even any masculinity in a movie, it's kind of checked. It's always you know checked. I mean? Yes. Upped in check. Right. Or like called out or whatever. And that's why so many movies, do you realize how many retro movies are being released? I just got a press release. Fifth element is coming back, back to theaters. Yes. In November. Yeah. I mean, Godzilla many- minus one this Friday, next Friday, week from uh, this Friday. Yeah. With no, yeah. 13 minutes of extra BTS. Oh, sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. going to go see Fifth Element on the big screen. Yeah, I yeah, adore yeah. that movie. But you're right. They, they're they're trying. At least they're trying to figure out ways to survive, right? And this is this is how you do it. Like you're yeah. like. But Hollywood will not be. Uh, you know, movie theaters are going to have to open more up to the Asian markets and anime, which will fill theaters. Anytime there's a, a oh god, what's the dragon one? The dragon anime chat. You know which one I'm talking about. Demon Slayer. Why did I say dragon? Demon Slayer. Like if there's like a showing at my theater, parking lots full. Parking lots wow. full for that. Yeah, so they need to open. They're going to have to do that because Hollywood is getting decentralized, whether they like it or not. And I'm absolutely yep. fucking stoked for that. I think this is this is good Same. for culture. It'll be good for the art. Um, they need to get away from this corporatism that I don't think. Th- I think there is some desire to get away from it, and they don't know how. I'm okay. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to fucking say it because I want to white pill people a little bit, a little bit. You're in super trouble for this, saying this. So I was told. You know who told? Well, you know who told yeah. me. Okay. Okay. And I've told you this before, but I haven't said it. Yeah. Um. When it comes to, it's not okay. This isn't going to be a hundred percent turnaround. Just want to preface this. But Kevin Feige said, as far as diversity is concerned, we have done our bit for King and Country. We're done. Doesn't mean they're going to change overnight. Doesn't mean everything's going to change. I don't know if it's going to change at all. That's what, that's what he said, though. That's what he said. So, which says a lot of things. That a lot of things were dictated. Maybe Kevin Feige's, you know, being a producer in Hollywood and trying to shift the blame a little bit. I don't know. I've always thought he was completely in charge, but that I just, I'm just passing on what I heard, and I promised to pass it on. It was supposed to be a year from now, but why not? Let's just do it now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Ask for forgiveness. <laughs> I'll just ask for forgiveness. But um yeah, and and it's because they're faced with this. And you mentioned earlier like all the activists are going somewhere. That's why they were running to gaming. You know, for one, it's a bigger industry, I, makes more money, yep. uh way more lucrative, and that's why they were running the gaming and man did they fuck that up. Mm-hmm. Man did they fuck it up. But uh yes, 20% plunge uh because it's a purge that we all knew was coming and it had a lot of factors. There was a lot of factors, Chris, but the yep. biggest one, and 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 they let it fester like a cancer, is pissing off the audience. That's why I said two years ago, I said it this year. I'm like, whatever the election is, however you're going to vote Hollywood, I would just sit this one out if you want an industry. I would just fucking sit it out. Doesn't mean you have to vote any different. I you know I don't care. I think you're dumb, but I mean like you vote for whoever you want, but. You can even talk about policy if you want. That's fine. But if you're doing what uh, Michael Keaton did. I saw a movie that he was in called Goodrich, which we reviewed on Film Threat. It's a little indie movie. He's the, it's, it's this family drama where he is a man that basically the whole story is he has disappointed every woman in his life. But I feel like Hollywood feels like they need to cower and uh, to, because I feel like, God, this sounds, this is gonna, all of this will sound bad to say. There needs to be balance in the industry, right? There are just way too many people in high positions that are feminine. I don't mean they're all women either, but I just mean that they're feminine. And it's sort of forced old school folks like Michael Keaton to feel obligated to you know show that they are on they're on board they're on board and 
It's like they got to bend the knee, right? Uh, right. It's because they've exactly. chased the masculinity out of a lot of things. And again, I completely agree. There needs to be balance, egalitarianism. That's what there needs yeah. to be. I don't want one dominant over the other. They're just, uh, but one is missing. Uh, Star Wars is missing masculinity and has been yes. since Disney took it over. And that's what killed it. Marvel has been missing masculinity. Doctor Who has, is missing masculinity. Star Trek is devoid of masculinity. And these were male-dominated brands that women liked, that everybody liked. Um, and it, it's like what we were talking about earlier. They tried to will something into existence. This is what happened to the comic industry. We've talked about it before. There was some stupid anecdotal poll that was put up. Like, are women interested in comic books? They didn't say, they didn't ask, do women buy comic books regularly or anything? They just, are they interested? And guess what? Half the population said yes. And the, the, the movie theaters were seeing that too. And they're like, well, we just need to make, they saw a potential audience there, which is always there, by the way. But what they thought was, uh, uh, for women was what, what like Hollywood producer, uh, middle-aged women in HR departments in corporate. In corporate America, that's what they thought they wanted. Uh, no, no. There's still this thing called the family out there. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, women mostly like their the men, you know, and, and don't hate them because uh, they don't work in Hollywood where the men are were pretty awful for a long time. We're pretty up. But not all dudes are like that. So, um, but the, here, here's, here's the thing. Like, everybody likes Michael Keaton. Everybody likes Batman, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Okay. This was fucking stupid what he says here. And it's oh, and it's oh. how he says it. It's how he says it. This is fucking retarded. This is why I call them adult pretenders because most of them are a bunch of empty-headed fucking morons and it doesn't matter if he's older than me, he's had life experience and he's a grandpa now and that's great and he's a family man, but most of them work in insular Hollywood and their assistants feed them their takes on politics and stuff. They don't know shit. So they feel confident enough to go out there and say stuff like this and, and not think about, like, what are the repercussions? Hey, hi, Michael. You know, for some of you folks who, uh, yeah, share guys mostly, I can't hear it. You can't hear it? The audience hear it? I can't hear it. I think the, the audience can hear it. I think the audience the, can? The audience yes? can. Yeah, I don't know okay. why you can't. I'll just, no, nah, whatever. It's all good. Man. Well, I'll sum up what it, you've heard it, though. So I see is for the audience hey hi michael you know for some of you folks who uh guys mostly i guess who are thinking about attending a rally with musk and and, and trump um they don't really respect you they laugh at you behind your back they think you're stupid they don't want to hang out with you they have nothing in common with you they're not your bros and i'm, I'm telling you when, when trump Years ago, I guess, said I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and that still vote for me. Basically, what he's saying in parentheses is these people are so stupid. They're so dumb. They'd still vote for me. They have no respect for you. Trust me. Hey, hi, Michael. So um, you know so you, you could read that there. Um, that yeah. is uh, exactly how Hollywood feels about you. Yeah, Michael Keaton who I respect as an actor has always been a cantankerous mofo. He doesn't respect you. He doesn't give a shit about you. He wouldn't fucking piss on you if you were on fire. He's an adult pretender. So that's massive projection for one. And uh, nobody, I think I don't vote uh, based on who I'm going to hang with or break bread with for one. And to come out there and Michael is still calling you stupid. He's still calling so every, he's literally calling everybody who votes for Trump stupid. This fucking retard. It's so arrogant and elitist. Yes. And not surprised. I like I have seen this since I moved to the West Coast in 1989 when Batman was out. I remember I saw that movie 7 8 times in the theater. I yeah, probably a lot more than that now that I think about it. but and there was uh I, I had an office on Hollywood Boulevard and the Egyptian which was run down then was playing it still this was in movies were in theaters for a long time the the video home video version wouldn't come out for a year 
they Hollywood has so damaged not just their brand, the business model. They have made movies less valuable, less special. So this is just so sad to see. But yeah, I, I saw. I don't. We just like, go to the dollar theater and see second run Batman eighty nine playing in like freaking November. You know, it opened in June. So those were those were the days. Those were the days when you didn't know. Um, but uh, I guess Batman feels like he could sway. Uh, maybe he was asked. I don't give a shit. I don't care. You come out there and say that, and you call half the country stupid. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. Uh, hey, hey, Michael Keaton, are you uh, are you going out and paying your employees? If you have employees, are you paying their health care? Are you buying their houses? Are you paying for their cancer care? Because that's what Trump Trump did for his employees. Uh, Elon Musk answered answered emails from everybody at Tesla. We we could directly email Elon Musk and we get a response if we needed to. God, you know, I haven't had McDonald's since my health incident in April, but I kind of want McDonald's. I, I was like. Watching that footage of Trump. Yeah, seed oils are terrible. Was, don't don't touch it. Well, I, well, seed look, oils are fucking awful. Don't don't. I know they're bad. Yeah. I haven't eaten it. I haven't. Eaten, yeah. I'm just saying, like, watching that video was so fun. He was he was being look. We all all political things like that are staged. They're of course, all, every single one. There isn't one that's not. Both sides do it. In the moment, he was genuine with the people he interacted with, to the to the customers, oh, yeah. to the guy teaching him fries. The guy who just had two assassination attempts should just walk into a fucking random McDonald's and start passing stuff out. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course and it's staged. It's going to be on Rogan Friday. Is it Friday they're recording it? And then, like, when does it drop? Uh, It probably drops right. Well, they have to edit it. I thought it was recording it because they record they everything. Edit? Yeah, but but how much editing they really don't do much. No, editing. they don't. They, they, I don't think they, uh, they do a little bit. I know of some that have been edited <laughs> with the Randall Carlson and stuff, but, um, yeah, I, yeah, I can't wait. This is dumb. This was dumb. Uh, you know, like at least we're, we're going to show the other side of this with Zachary Levi, but he's not disparaging the other voters. That's, that's the difference. It's like, you could not, I don't care if he likes Trump or not. I don't care if Michael Keaton likes Trump or not. That doesn't factor into my enjoyment of his movies in any way, shape, or form. But uh, it, it, it's when you go after the American people, that's when it starts hurting my enjoyment. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck you. These people have made you a very rich man. You get to pretend for a living. You don't even have to write the words that you're pretending to. Somebody else does that for you. You just show up and pretend well. That's, I, I would just wake up every morning going, I have the greatest job in the world. I don't have to write shit. I have to show up. People fucking pamper me. I get free food and I get to just repeat lines. Yeah. What a fucking great country. What a great country. But he's all, they don't respect. They're not going to hang out. Are you going to hang out with the, with the people, Michael? Are you going to do that? You're going to get down there, hang out with the people? I don't think so. I don't fucking think so. Yeah. Shut up and act. You see Clifton Duncan's tweet today? It's pretty good. I saw that. Oh my God. I was showing it to people. Yeah. And, and to illustrate to off the Zachary Levi, I don't know if you're gonna play that, but I, um, yeah, I gotta find it. But uh, I was at a major Hollywood event last night with Alan. Oh, Aang, nice. With verbal riot. We're all hanging out. I think you know what people are done with? People are done with, I'm sick of feeling a certain way politically and feeling I don't have the freedom to say that's how I feel because I'll be shamed. Like I just told you I have an STD, you know, it's people are done with that. I think a lot of people and Zachary implies that in the video. I hope you show it. It's, it's short. Um, no x-ray girl today. You got to you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, Gary and I have to do everything. Uh, but but that was like people are sick of it. Like you're not a bad person, and I'm tired of this. I, I only care if my team wins or my I don't I you know what? A little of that fine. I care that we solve the problems facing us. 
That's not a team thing. You know, we have so many problems in this country from AI to, and I, this is why I love Elon. He's focused on solving problems. Mm-hmm. And I think he saw the political landscape is why is this like this? Why aren't we just discussing a problem? Here's the best way to fix it to quote Padme from episode two, or uh, no, that was Anakin. And then we just go and solve the problem. It was Anakin. Sorry. You have that small political discussion in that embarrassing scene. Anyways. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying I would rather see a politician focused on problems rather than my side wins because the other th- side is evil. That is scary. No, that's your, that's like cultish true believer kind of stuff. Like yes. we are fighting evil and that's what the the narrative was started in 2016. And now you even see some like Democrats like backing off that, like who still don't like Trump, but they're like backing off the, Oh, like when Bill Maher said, I'm not going to hate Trump supporters. I wish you would have said no. that eight years ago. Yeah. But you know, but uh, like that's, that's, that's what we're trying to get to. So we can go back to, cause, cause once a precedent is set, we, we don't go back, Chris. So once it's like, oh, we just have to completely demonize the one side and use lawfare and start, you know, just shredding the constitution, then it's fucking over that, you know, uh, and we don't respect, uh, we, we don't respect our elections. We don't, uh, we, and, and we're at that, we're starting to question it now and we should, we should. Well, we should I'll question say, a lot of fucking things, and we should always do that. That's part of our generation, pal. Yeah. And I'll say this. If Trump wins, let's say he wins, and there are riots and violent protests, the media is culpable. Yep. The media made that happen. Yep. Because I still talk to people, and it's like I'm talking to someone uh, on MSNBC. They have no thought of their own. They've been fed so much propaganda that they're it's, you can't, you can't snap them out of it. Like, like a hypnosis there, there are, um, they just, when they hear a thought, they react with a recording in their head that they already heard a thousand times being fed that thing, like, uh, fed this idea. Here's this idea. Here's this idea. And then it's just, they have no way to snap out of it. And I've seen people like that. I noticed I had people, I was at the Latino film awards uh, sponsored by the CCA. Paulie from Latino Santa says, I am a, he was supposed to be my plus one, Paulie. You missed out. I don't know what you were doing, but Uh, RIP Fernando Valenzuela, by the way. Yes. I was talking to Paulie about that. Fucking legend. Continue. Uh, But, but um, people I think are tired of the hiding how they feel And being vilified for how they feel. And if we are going to fix things, because we are, we have challenges, whether it's energy or uh, AI, there's so much to deal with that we can't have this, you know, system where we're, we're making our neighbors into villains and the enemy. I, I, you know, back to Gina Carano. Mm -hmm. I remember when I read that and I thought, where's the lie? Mm -hmm. Like this is happening. So, um, it's very sad. She, to she's going to be here this weekend. Yeah, I, you'll, I'm sure you'll hang out with her. She's awesome. Tell her I said hi. I will. Well, she knows who I am, but you know, she knows who you are. All right, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Uh, all right, let's let's share Zachary, and then we're going to talk about Blade. Oh God, I know. It's it's very sad what's happened to the vampire movie. Uh, can I pull it up? No, now it's gone. God, I hate. I really, really hate. <laughs> I'm on Firefox oh. right now. Oh, Firefox? Yeah, on- so like it was allowing me to do it earlier. Now it's not. Okay. So let's all try good. it again. I'll see Find if I it. can do it. If not, you're just we're just going to have to paraphrase what he said. Yeah, it's completely gone. What? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. It's fucking Firefox. It's like, oh, maybe you can share something. Maybe you can't. Mm. Maybe you can't. All right. Well, Zachary, uh, you might be able to hear it. I think I'm going to find it. Yeah, you find it. Okay. I can send you the link. Hang on. I got it. 
I got Why don't I one. share it? You share it. Here we go. It's uh, Steph's, Steph's tweet. My nerdy home. Oh, that's cool. There. Let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, let, let me get it here. In the private chat. In the meantime, hello, chat. How are you? I missed you. Okay. I'm gonna, I might have to mute myself because sometimes it echoes if I share it. So I'm going to mute myself and I'll just. He's going to mute himself and keep talking, which I really enjoy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hit play. Oh, and by the way, to, to Whoopi Goldberg and to Sonny and to, you know, all of the folks at The View. Look. I, I I don't think it's accurate to say that somehow Hollywood is both a liberal and a conservative town. To a, to Whoopi's point, back in the day, there might have been a bit more of a balance, you know, um, and there have always been more, let's say, conservative leaning uh, stars that have, that have been able to to say those things, um, but. You really have to be at a certain level of your career in order to get away with it, uh, num number one. But number two, that was also back then. And I think naming just John Voight and Dennis Quaid, and really you only named John, John Voight, whoopee, somebody else had to help you with Dennis Quaid, of the thousands of actors in Hollywood that you could only name two, I think actually speaks to that. And what that means is there's plenty, and by the way, they have sent me lots of messages, plenty of, of people in my industry in Hollywood that are terrified to publicly say that they would vote for Donald Trump or be conservative in any way. That's why you don't see them. That's why they're not very prevalent or prominent because they know that there's ramifications for this kind of shit. But like I said, y'all, our industry is going to be fucking gonzo. Like it's or it already is. We're getting we're getting eroded. The the the, the pandemic and the strikes and all of these things have already eroded it so much. So, you know, I, to my, so my, my, anyway, my, my cry to all of you out there, you closeted conservatives, <laughs> closeted uh, Trump voters, y'all, it's now or never. I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like I, I do whatever you feel like you need to do. If you need to come out publicly and say it, if you don't, if you feel like you, you still can't, then don't, you know, I'm, I would never pressure you to that, but, but know that if what you're afraid of is somehow the backlash of an industry that's not going to exist very soon, then don't let that, don't let that hold you back. You know? Well said. <clears throat> and did you hear him disparage anybody else? Did, did you hear him no. like, uh, you know, you're dead to me or, you know, you're stupid. No, it's just like, Hey, this is our side. Speak your mind. Uh, and he just said a basic fact that people are scared to death. Chris gets emails. I get emails. Jeremy, as everybody, uh, drinker, they all get like, I love what you're doing, bro, but I can't say anything. And oh, I get I, it. Like, they got families to feed and stuff. But um, people he, say it to me in public. Yeah. They will come up to me at a screening, at a movie. They'll see me in public. I just want to say, I love what you're doing. Just keep, keep fighting the good fight. Keep, I'm like, uh, uh, how about. Can I get a oh, selfie, but I can't put it up. Don't put it on. <laughs> right, right. Oh, there are people <laughs> I'm in pictures with that I can't post. I'll send you, I'll send you some DMs. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, there's a couple people where it's like a very good reason. But um right. it, it's 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 crazy. Um, but you understand it. Like, you know, but there, there's but he's right. There's a point where like if you want an industry, you're gonna have to stand up and the other thing you pointed out, which I don't mention enough, I am completely guilty of this. The the I hate the term below the line, but uh, right. you know, yeah, but that's what they're called, the below the line workers. So many of them out there, they're just like normal, regular lunch pail folks who work in the industry, and they're the ones who get hurt the most, and they're the ones who are, quite frankly, the most normal. But like, like they they uh, that they, they reach out the most. I talked to one. Uh, who works on a Taylor Sheridan production? Um, really good guy, really good guy, uh, and 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 yeah, he's like, there's this secret thing that they they do with each other. It's like, so so the, how they suss each other out. They're all, do you watch Drinker? It's like I watch Drinker too. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's oh, man. yeah, that's how that's how they that's how they find uh, each other in Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> they they talk about Drinker. I get I get brought up a couple times, but Drinker's a man. Um, and uh, it, it's crazy to hear, but it's and the reason it's not Drinker, it's it's the it's the audience. It's the audience that gravitates to Drinker, right? That's that's the power. It's not Drinker. It's not me or you or anybody. It's it's the audience, and that's what they're. That's what the, that's what Hollywood is finding out, and that's what they feel threatened by, uh, and they should. Uh, you, you know, you're accountable to your customer and your audience. Like they are always right, and a few of them might say some things you don't like. That's life. That's always been life. That's the way it'll always be. That's what we say about fandom. This whole myth of the toxic fandom. Yeah, there's some assholes out there, and there's some people making some jokes, and there's some sensitive motherfuckers who just can't fucking take it. You know, like uh, as far as creatives are concerned. And that's, you're going to have to deal with it. That is the 21st century model of entertainment. You have to take the good with the bad. They were able to filter out the bad uh, through, uh, uh, you know, like people used to have to write letters, Chris. <laughs> people used to, people used to like break out their piece of paper and their pen and write, this sucks. And then get a stamp and put it in a fucking envelope. And I admire that. I admire the hell out of that. But that's I, what they used to do. It's just easier I, now. I built Film Threat on writing letters. Yes. I had an image writer printer. I would write letters to people. Here's how far I went, okay, in early issues of Film Threat. I interviewed Charles Bukowski and Alan Moore through the mail. <laughs> yes, that's how you I did it. I sent Alan Moore in the, in the UK, like, 12 sheets of paper, you know, two questions per page, self-addressed stamped envelope. No one knows what that is. And he would mail back his response. Uh, I did that with Chuck Bukowski too. And then someone stole it from the film threat offices back in the day. No. Yeah. I had a lot of things that were like, you know, could be worth money today that are just gone, lost. Yeah. Well, yeah. You and me both. Yeah. So I I should have. Fired my staff back then. To, to, and, yes. And, oh, God. I, 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 oh, okay. God. Well, hey, con- all right. Before we get to Blade, I watched right. the whole Tim Pool thing go down. Uh, I, I, he, like, he's an infinite better YouTuber than I will ever be, a, a better content creator. I've met him. He was incredibly nice and gracious. Incredibly nice and gracious. Everybody I met at the house was incredibly nice and gracious. There's Brett out there from Pop Culture Crisis, that is a good dude, right? Luke is a good dude, and Tim's a good dude. Tim's a good dude. He is. Um, I, I I, wouldn't throw my, my employees under the bus, but I think we got more context the next day because he's got a life-changing thing going on, which I think is going to be incredibly fucking good for him. Uh, what is it? He's I, having I, a kid. He's having oh, a kid. Him. Yeah, he's getting married he's and having a kid, and that's, like, fucking great. And you know what he probably figured out he's like i've got 30 people at my house that i'm basically taking care of like kids and now i'm gonna have my own kid i need to focus on that like i get that i absolutely get that i still would just do a private meeting you know maybe right um and and he's got to change a lot of things and uh i think he did say on his live stream like i can't work this hard and have a kid now i i know what he yeah I, i i know what he means okay for one like Tim does work very hard. Like Tim is on hours a day, right? So people will go work, and I I agree with that. It's he's not going out into the fucking salt mines or anything. He's got he's got the greatest job in the world. And he's also got a huge bank account, which helps. Um, I remember when like we had our second child. Um, Melissa had a cesarean and was at because she owned her own business, so she had to be there. She was at work two weeks later, Ugh. and. Uh, and either grandma or I had the kid, and I was taking Logan as a tiny infant uh, with with the breast milk that uh, you know, Melissa had pumped to the fucking comic shop, right? Uh, you know, because Melissa had to use her hands at work. So I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And we were t- trading off with grandma and stuff, and we made it work. We made it work. Uh, I think he'll be fine. Uh, I would recommend, you know, being being involved in the raising of your kid, not having a nanny, but uh, that's just me. You make it work. It, it, it is hard. 
it's hard, but at least in my case, I wanted to do it. It was my excuse to not go out. It was like, oh, darn, go to the sports bar and watch sports and drink the beer. I got to stay home with my kids, which I love. So you just have, but it, look, I, I, I forgive Tim. You're allowed to have a bad day. Yeah, I of course. You, but, but I'll say like, I'll say with, with my team, I always say like, look, we don't have to be perfect as long as it's entertaining. So we goof on each other when the shit goes wrong south and we laugh about it. And then Alan will, you know, he'll get me. We, we you know, I get inged or whatever. It's funny. Uh, you know, it is. But we don't it's, take it's, all that seriously. It's, it's, like, like, you know, Jeremy at Geeks and Gamers has, a, like, like a lot of people. Like, I could never do that. So that's yeah. that's a talent that Jeremy has that I do not. Like, four people, really good. Yeah. Four people who are, like, uh, yeah. I mean, my diversity hires are better than yours. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> right, right. Even though one of them's off getting their nails. But they are self-motivated self-starters. That's exactly what I look for is people. I don't have to fucking tell them what to do. Like. Rarely ever, uh, you know, like there'll be days I don't talk to Garrett at all. And he's probably really thankful for that. <laughs> but like, I, I, you know, I'll check in with Garrett like once every couple, three days. Right. Hey, how you doing? You know, Perry's off editing. We'll check in once every couple days. You know, we'll just say hi. But they're off doing their thing. And and uh, and being a self-motivated person. So if you want to work for Tim Pool, if you want to hear some unsolicited advice you're working for tim pool that's fucking amazing bust your ass you know be self-motivated don't sit around going please tell me what to do you know like that like i can understand that's frustrating still that's not something, it's something you do you, you, you yeah you sit down and have, i had to learn that you know like i don't like love being a boss some people love it it's like i don't like it i i, I don't love being a boss uh, I, I do now because like the team is fun and, uh, we're, we have a really good time together, but, um, yeah, I fucking hate it. Dude, firing people at the comic shop was brutal. I fucking hated it. I, I, I've tried every excuse to like, not fire. Like, even when a person stole from me, I'm like, man, well, maybe they won't do it again. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't want to fire them. Uh, you know, <laughs> like I hate doing it, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say. I, I just wouldn't have done it publicly, but I, I mean, there's the side that's saying it's manipulative and it's for content and you'd be right. You'd be right. It is. It is. But, uh, I think it's going to be great for him to have a kid. It changes your life in so many, it gives your life meaning that you never thought was you had. And, uh, I, I, I was a person like, I'm never going to have kids. But, God, I was glad I was wrong about that, man. I couldn't wait to have kids, but I'll say this. Um, I, I kind of, uh, I feel for Tim in the sense that I remember being super high strung like him early in my career. Yeah. I have mellowed out a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And my, like you, I hire people where I don't have to tell them what to do. You know, I, my least favorite management style because I have been managed like this is micromanage. I hate that. I don't like it. I want to bring in people that, you know, once I, we, we, we're, once trust is established, go do your thing. You know, I can count on one hand how many times a manager or a boss got mad at me for just doing something that I wasn't told to do, just getting off my ass and getting some work done. Yeah. Uh, I screwed up a couple things a couple times, but like the vast majority of the time, they're like, oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. And, and, and I was busy working instead of sitting there on my ass doing nothing. You know, uh, that was, that was my big problem at Tesla and it's not Elon's fault. They had this micromanaging ponytail fucking manager at the place oh. I was at. And like it, you know, I would go and start inventorying the parts department. He's like, why are you doing that? I'm like, cause I had nothing else to do and we need to constantly do this. Well, you're not doing it my way, I'm all, but is it getting done? <laughs> are we actually getting the inventory done? That should be the important thing. Not yeah. your way, uh, which changed every fucking two weeks, by the way. Um, all right. So, Blade, let's see if I can share this article. Let's mystery share. Boo, boo, boo. Yes. Oh, yeah, I can share this. So maybe it's just not Twitter it's letting me share. That's freaking gay. Uh, here we go. 
allow. Blade. Blade. So this happened while we were live yesterday, Chris. Um, this is not surprising because this is, you know, right up there. Like, what is this? There is proof God is real. How was the universe created? And then third is how in the fuck do you make a vampire movie about a guy hunting vampires, killing vampires? So those are the three mysteries of the universe. And apparently Marvel couldn't crack it. Marvel couldn't crack it. You can't figure out how to make a vampire hunter movie about a guy hunting vampires, killing vampires. Well, here I, it's an I, enigma. I, I have a theory about this. This is part of the purge. Yes. It's better to not make this mu movie if it's going to be a compromised production. So it's better to, you, you shut it down. Everyone involved is fired. You can revisit. It's not going away. You own the property. I still think just make it with Wesley Snipes. I don't make, know what, dude, uh, there was a room. It was one of those scooper bullshit rumors, but like a Midnight Suns movie, you get Wesley Snipes and fucking Ghost Rider and Man yeah. Thing and uh, Dracula. You get all your supernatural brother voodoo. Bring in brother voodoo. You could get started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, guest starring Doctor Strange, like all the supernatural superheroes, and do a Midnight's Sun spelled S O N S, not S U N S. I was so fucking retarded. Um, and and do the whole that that's one side you they haven't really explored. You know, they did they did a Werewolf by Night special, which was actually wasn't bad to be honest with you. But um, yeah, that's my that's one of my favorite sides of Marvel that you could do, zombie. There's so many fucking characters you can use. I mean, she's not particularly super, but like if you, uh, Moon Dragon, bring in Moon Dragon. I always thought Moon Dragon was hot. She had big tits and she was bald. Um, yeah. Satana. Dude, my, my comic rack is filled with those. I freaking love those comics. Son of Satan, like the proper son of Satan, you know, walking around with a cape and a pentagram on his chest and he's like gonna fight his father because the son of satan is fighting for good by the way vampirella with her huge well, boobs. marvel but like i would i, I would know. buy i would buy the property just for that yes vampirella yes, all day long <laughs> vampirella played by sydney sweeney uh sydney sweeney can play moon dragon and vampirella oh my god she's so awesome she i is. love her but yeah marvel has removed blade from its release calendar uh, and it's this isn't a shock. They, they announced it in 2019. They have Marashala Ali, a great actor, by the way. He was awesome as Cottonmouth. Uh, he was good in... Uh, why am I blanking on it now? Alita. He was good in Alita Battle, Battle Angel. Uh, he's a great actor. True Detective Season 3. Dude's got chops. Uh, but yeah, Wesley Snipes is still out there. Probably a little cheaper. Um, based Wesley Snipes, by the way, went, if you're going to go to prison, go to prison for tax evasion, taxation is theft. He also got fucked over by David Goer, Goyer in uh blade, uh, Trinity, Dr David Goyer's a little bitch, by the way. Uh, I, I, um, so, uh, Wesley Snipes lawyer shopped at my store back in the day while that was all going down. And I, I can't give you the details, but he he told me the whole deposition with him and David Goyer, and it's like, oh fuck, what a punk, dude! Is it just ratted him out to the studio all the time, like treated him like shit, the kind of stuff that would probably get you canceled. <laughs> it's the way he treated Wesley Snipes was fucking terrible. And David Goyer is a fucking hack. The only thing he's good with is Chris Nolan. Okay, mm. I think Chris Nolan can make anybody look good. To be honest with you. But yeah, Blade is uh, removed, and I think you're right, Chris. I think this is part of the purge, and this sucks because like I, I, I want a good Blade movie, but yeah. we've we've heard two different plots, right? So we heard the four women one, which was absolutely true. So whatever one was leaked out there about the four women running around and leading Blade by his nose, that was true. The other one was it's taking place in the 30s, and it's going to deal with racism in America back then. It's like, oh, fuck. <sighs> Yeah, it's just like wicked. It's like, can we? It's it's so not subtle. It's so on the nose. 
it's no subtext, no layers to something. Just overtly say the thing. We get it. Jeez, God. So, uh, yeah. I mean, is it technically canceled? Uh, I think this is as close as you will get, and I think Chris is absolutely right. It'll get retooled and turn into something else, and maybe Marshall Ali. Like, I'm okay with him playing the part, but uh, I would prefer Wesley Snipes. Absolutely yes. prefer. Um, he was the, uh, in Deadpool Wolverine, his appearance kind of stole the show. And seeing that was, fuck, it was awesome. It was great. I don't care if the context was a little light surrounding his appearance, <laughs> but I thought it was cool as hell. It was awesome. Yeah. Thought it was cool as hell. Uh, oh, th that article. Uh, <laughs> did you see? Um, so the producers of Acoline uh, or Al Alcon, Alcon uh, who produced uh, Blade Runner 2049, want to sue Elon Musk for copyright infringement. And Elon Musk responded, that movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't love him anymore. Uh, Blade Runner 2049 sucks. I wanted to like that so bad, Chris. Me and my wife were like, because it's it's Blade Runners are like our favorite movie, right? So we're like, oh my god, we're gonna see it together, date night. Man, did it suck! Bunch of walking slowly to doorways. It's kind of hazy orange. Harrison Ford bought a shirt at fucking Walmart before he decided to go in, and it turned out to be the girl is the key to everything at the end. Fuck off. And it definitively answered the question about a lot of stuff that you should never answer. Kind of like Joker 2. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that movie. I hate it. Uh, and it flopped. Flopped hard. It flopped. Um, I saw Blade Runner in the theater, the original, when I was 12. I yeah, I, I was one of just a few people in, in the theater. It was yep. empty. It was me, my friend Doug Johnson, and my mom, because it was rated R. Right? And yeah. remember how they promoted it, Chris? Yeah. Okay, so they promoted it as an action movie. So if you saw the ver one of the TV trailers, it was the uh, Van... I say Vangelis. I guess it's Vangelis. I've been saying Vangelis for Vangelis. like 50 years. Um, the the ending theme that goes... -na 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 -na. So it's the more sped up one. And it, right. it had that theme over it, and it showed Pris, like, flipping and fucking gunshots, and it looked like a total fucking action movie, like a crazy action movie. And, and no, it was not. It was noir. It was uh, uh, surreal. It was, uh, it was a very – it was quiet. It's a very quiet movie. Uh, and nobody expected that back then. They wanted Indiana Jones, pretty much. When I saw it, I didn't know what noir was. I was 12. So I'm like, what's, what's noir? And uh, I thought it was the most stylish, coolest thing I'd ever fucking seen. I was like, uh, you know, back when I, was, when I was 12, I knew who Douglas Trumbull was. He was kind of like a rock star to me. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, so me and my friend Doug walked away. I'm like, oh, my God. And that opened my eyes to like so many, so many more movies. As it, it was very impressionable. Uh, I bought every piece of merchandise involved with that, which was like five. They had a cor yeah. corgi car, a couple of magazines, a comic book adaptation, and a poster, <laughs> and the a sound soundtrack, and the soundtrack. Yeah, but I the soundtrack the wasn't the original one. It was from the American Symphony. Remember? Yeah. So the only uh, soundtrack you can get was from the I think it was called the American Symphony, and the Vangelis one didn't come out until 1994. Yeah. Yeah. God, I love that. I loved it, but it was. Weird how their marketing, which did not represent the movie well, didn't eat that didn't even work. Mm -mm. Right. And I also remember leaving the theater very melancholy, like, what did I just see? You know, but I was aware of film noir because I worked at a uh, a video store, Thomas Video in Royal Oak. And so I, you know, film we talked movies. That's all we did all day was talk movies. And my so job at I, the time was paperboy. <laughs> So. I was also a paper boy. Yeah. I was a paper boy and worked at the video store. And I always had money as a kid as a result of that. So I could buy comics and, you know, Pringles and big gulps and Slurpees. Yep. Go to baseball cards. 
you know, I wasn't so much into drinking or partying then. I just wanted to buy buy shit. So, yeah. I just want to point out, Chris, that there's still no official season three announcement of the Rings of Power. Well, you should start counting the days. Start counting the days. My guess is they're waiting 30 days out from, which we're very close to, from when it ends to see what that post, like the the what the basically the binging audience, which is going to be nothing. Yeah. Which is going to be nothing. I still think it gets announced. I do. It's very strange that they're taking this long. Do you think they'll say season three is the wrap up? Like we'll do three seasons and that's it? Uh, It could be. I think if season three like performs poorly, then they'll like, uh, we're su- shooting uh, seasons four and five back to back and they're uh, two episodes. Season four will be one episode. Season five <laughs> will be episode two. <laughs> I mean, just wrap up the story. So whatever. But yeah. Yeah, it's a memory. Uh, nobody cares. It's a fucking terrible show. Good Lord. I'm glad it's over. And I'm glad it's going to take two weeks or two years. Sorry, two, two weeks, two years, two years. Uh, going over some articles. I guess we can get the super chats at this point. Yeah. Get the super chat. You got a uh, stream coming up later, right? I do. Hollywood on the rocks at 1 p.m. Pacific time with Ing the Merciless. We have a lot to talk, not a lot to discuss. A lot to discuss. Yeah. And by the way, and by the way, we're doing an interview live with Troy Duffy, the director of Boondock Saints, is coming on the show. No, when? Yeah. Well, when? When? On Hollywood on the Rocks. Oh, like at two p.m. Pacific time, he will be there. Fuck yeah! So, Boondock Saints three, baby. Yeah, I'll ask him. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. You know, but he'll be. I was great. I was like, can we do it live? I think our audience would like it. Hell yeah. We try to do interviews live. Uh, uh, he is the subject of a documentary called Overnight, which you can buy. Bo- I love that doc. Uh, yeah. So- oh, I'll ask him a lot. I just watched, I just watched uh, Boondock Saints a month ago. I fucking love that movie. It it's was a firefight. Back- He's, it's coming back to theaters. Oh, I'm going to go. I already got tickets. I already got go. tickets. Yeah, I like that movie just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Just a little bit. Yeah. All right. We're going to get to you, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, by, by the way, thanks for coming back. We've been gone for like two weeks, right? Yeah. We were gone for two weeks. So thanks for uh, coming back. And I also want to thank our Spotify. <laughs> we, we, make, we don't make a dime. That's going to change. But uh, we, we don't make a dime on Spotify or Apple. But I want to thank... Everybody who listens to us on Apple Music and uh, Audible and Spotify, because this show performs very well on those platforms. Surprisingly well. I never bothered looking. Uh, I, I I think I've looked at our podcast and analytics like twice in my life. But uh, it was very shocking that, yeah, we, we don't do any promotion or anything, but we're doing pretty well. So thank you. Thank you. All the truckers out there, people driving around, doing your chores, listening to us, fucking old farts, talking about nerd stuff. We appreciate you. We appreciate you here on YouTube, too, by the way. Um, Albert, not a retro for five Canadian pesos, says, a Friday night tights on Wednesday afternoon. Yes, either I'm having a great day or I'm trapped in hell. Either way, let's rock and go. Yeah, uh, the reason I played that theme, I probably should have said that earlier, is uh, I played it on Monday for the Rumble one. And a lot of people were like, I didn't know this existed. And I was like, oh, I haven't played it in a while. So when Dan Vask, uh, mate, I'm going to say something nice. This is really difficult. I hope you feel better, Dan. Uh, he was fighting off a pack of starving children and a pack of starving dogs who came to take his can of beans from his shanty house in Brazil. And he had to fight them off with a machete. And he uh, almost cut off his hand. No, he did cut his fingers. Pretty badly. So uh, he won't be masturbating with his left hand. But I, I wish him a speedy recovery. Okay, so when Dan Vasquez was recording the song, he had a great idea of like, hey, let's let's have the fans do their own version of it and we'll, comp- we'll make a compilation video. And I fucking love that video. I fucking love it. So that's why I played it. Because it features you. 
Albert, Albert, not a retro for two Canadian pesos. Chris is here. This means no acolyte talk again. Well, we didn't talk about it till now. We well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about not it. Much, that's not much. There's not much to say. I mean, let's it's... let's talk about the new Blue Beetle villain, Jeremy Griggs. Oh my, that was hilarious. <laughs> and so YouTubers dumb. so fucking this, gay. What it does is it shows you. You know, I think about the the golden era of comics. Who were the men and women? Who were they? How did they come to being? They came. They fought in wars. They had families. They were. They they had experiences they, they they brought to their work, whether it's in uh, illustration or writing. I mean, famously, Stan Lee was very influenced by Shakespeare. Like they were uh, great literature were influences, and the influences of today's writers and comics is I watched some YouTube. It's very very sad when you think about what the. Th the, who, who, what made the men and women who made the things we love? Who were they as people? And if you've seen a documentary about uh, Stan Lee, I know there have been a couple. I read his biography, which is, it's okay. It's kind of like written for kids mostly. But, um, I, I, you know, you think about who those men were, what influenced the, the stories they told. I see modern comics and even modern film and TV and, what, what are they influenced by their fucking phones? It's yeah. sad. Clips. It, TikTok and clips. And yeah. TikTok clips and of Buffy. <laughs> that, that, that's their writing reference. TikTok clips of Buffy. I mean, it's, Angel. it's pathetic. And and so this is why the what we have, what we have now is so piss poor on so many levels because the people making it were influenced by things that kind of made them soft people. They haven't had challenges. And, you know, when you think about the, the, you know, go look into the life of Jack Kirby or Stan Lee. They were very humble, you know, they're very humble except for Stan, but it was kind of an act. He knew he was doing. I always felt that. Yeah. It's an act. It was an act that was really important for comics. Like, uh, yes. th did Stan take too much credit? Yes. But was Stan infinitely better than most of the creatives for comic books uh, being their spokesman? Yes. Both things yes. can be true. Both things can be true. Like, Kirby's the king. You'll never talk me out of it. But um, uh, I just think that, and, and Kirby was great in interviews, by the way. Very, very gracious guy. Like, I love Kirby, but like, a lot of people got mad at Stan because he was getting all the attention, which he was. But man, every kid knew who Stan Lee was. Uh, with Stan's soapbox, we read all that stuff. He was also oh, really friendly. Uh, he was a good spokesperson for comic books. He helped DC sales for fuck's sake. He helped all comic book sales. Uh, Stan being out there, so yeah, don't don't criticize him for that. Uh, I, Stan was nice. Met Stan multiple times. I met him a couple times. I've interviewed him like at at Dragon Con and stuff. I, I just every interaction with him was a, a great. Was and great. he signed my Origins of Marvel Comics and Son of Origins of Marvel Comics. Yes, book. I still have them. I remember just I remember staring at, at the, the covers. Uh, at the covers, I, the covers you, of those you, things were so rad. Ugh. You'd stare at it that's how much you loved it it, it, it spurred the imagination bring on the I bad mean, guys bring on the yeah, bad guys was the uh, uh the, the villains origins one. Oh god it's just you know they're re-releasing it right they're they're redoing it those uh books yeah they're redoing treasury editions now yeah like, because I, they're selling I yes like, facsimile covers of books that like you're actually paying more for the facsimile cover for the actual issue now i pointed that right. out when i was in the comic store i'm like you can get that comic for cheap. You know, the guy didn't want to hear it, but I'm like, 20 bucks. You can get the back issue with the real cover for 10. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, they're doing that with action figures now, too. They're redoing like the old uh, Toy Biz ones, and they're yeah. more expensive than the actual Toy Biz ones in the store. Right. Okay, that's fine. Whatever works for you. Uh, you hear about Dan Vass clearly chopping his own hand off. He really doesn't want to write that song. He's, he's written the song. I've heard the introduction and it's really good. Ooh. Dan's had to deal with like some oppression, you know, in his country. He's had to actually deal with a lot of crazy stuff. He's also, uh, 
I don't know. Dan needs to move here. He just does. Uh, thank you, King Bushkla, for nine ninety nine. Birdman five two zero twenty one for two dollars says Chris. I saw Substance last week. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the correct reaction. Um, God, I hope it gets nominated for an I Oscar. think I think it will. But the Academy hates horror. They just hate it. But they like horrors. That is 100% true. A. Marcellus for $5. It's FNT on Wednesday afternoon. Damn. Damn it, Barry. You broke. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> you broke the speed force again. Uh, we truly are in a cursed timeline. I just, I thought that would get you fired up. Slow Horses is arguably better than The Gentleman. Scott Christie Jones. I'll find out. Enough people have talked about one of those shows. It's got Gary Oldman in it, so I'm I won't argue with you until I see it. How's that sound? Albert not a retro for two dollars. Man builds house from abandoned uh pallets. See that vid. That's fucking awesome. That's America. That is uh that is the ingenuity of men right there. Uh I didn't see uh Tintin or Captain Haddock put on sunscreen. Or Tan Captain Haddock put on sunscreen. Neither did I. Dante Gray won for 50 uh, Danish Krona. Uh, but they're comic book characters, and I'm a human being man, and I have a third-degree burn on my bottom lip. Uh, but uh, it's getting better. Uh, Trish Page for $49.99. Woo! I had such a blast, blast hanging out with everyone. Thank you for being so kind. I was nervous with a larger group. It was amazing. Hail Trish, you were brilliant. Trish went on the group. So we went on this group, and there was a lot of members of the fellowship in this group. And we went to Peru, and we climbed on Machu Picchu, and went to Oyenta Tambo, and, and uh, Sexy Woman, and, and uh, the Temple of the Sun, and the Temple of the Monkey. And we had the best. There was no bickering. Nobody fucking bitched about it. It was just fun. Thank you, Nikiana Jones and Michael Collins for putting on that tour. Uh, Nikiana Jones has a channel. Michael Collins has a channel called Wandering Wolf. Uh, he does amazing stuff, and he's a, an incredibly cool dude. And he's a Texan. Just want to point that out. He's a Texan. Uh, yeah. Uh, John Gibson for $10. Chris, you inspired me to go learn how to ride a motorcycle. Gary, glad you are back. I loved Cusco when I was there. I need to go back and see the Nazca lines and also over to the Amazon. Yeah, that's the other part. Peru is so damn big. So we were in like the little Andes, which were huge. Like, I, I've never been, um, well, I've been that high, but I've never been like literally that high uh, for that long a time. And, uh, and I, I never completely acclimated, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I, did you get sick? I've been to Telluride. Yes. And I got sick. It there there is something short of breath. Yeah, it's thin air. You're kind of. Um, I remember drinking alcohol when I was in Telluride. Not supposed to do that. When you're, you're not high. supposed no. to do that. It it does not feel good. You get extra sick. Like it was weird. It was weird. Uh, and yeah, you get sunburn if you you know. And it just seems like it's overcast. And I got sunburn. Mm -hmm. You get fried. Um, yeah. So I got I got really sick one day. I got uh, colonizer's revenge, <laughs> Vera Kuchu's revenge. Um, I won't get into details, but I'll just say I know the limits of my my willpower now because I was sick on the day we were at Machu Picchu, and I'm like oh. I'm not fucking missing Machu Picchu, right? I don't care how shitty I feel. God, I hope if Joe Rogan, when Joe Rogan talks to Trump, he asks him about aliens. I hope he does too. Ask him all. Do you know, I feel like he already said kind of what he wants to talk to him about. Like, what's it like to be president? Like, kind of the mundane things, right? I think it's all a show, a reality show presented for the news. I, well, really, I hope he asks him and I hope we, we get some disclosure under Trump. But um, yeah. Machu Picchu is not even the most impressive place. It's like the touristy place. The location is impressive, but as far as like megaliths and stuff, there's other impressive places. But um, all I had to keep reminding myself when I was up there is Chris was like, I've been dope sick and it's worse than this. 
I've been dub sick and it's worse than this. And I willed my way through it and didn't uh, have any, wow. any accidents when I was up there. Oh, man. <laughs> it was brutal, oh, dude. God. But I loved it. It was great. And it was like misty. So we were like in the clouds and they'd blow away and it'd clear up and it just looked like the misty mountains. And it was fucking rad. It was rad. Love it. But I was really sick. Uh, Mr. Blades for five dollars. I heard uh, Kathleen Kennedy was avoiding being fired by announcing a female Star Wars series with Iger came back. Maybe why she greenlit Acolyte and made it so expensive. I I I don't know what goes on in that woman's mind, but um, none of it's good. None of it's good. She's not a very good leader of uh, well, women. I can't say men. She's not a very good leader. Uh, Mondo Unchained for four ninety nine. dollars Super chatting while driving in San Antonio. Drive safely, please. Uh, excited to see y'all again. See you tonight. To meet Jeremy. Why are you excited to meet Jeremy? Yeah, who cares? Yeah, that's weird. Uh, and make fun of him uh, for wearing Crocs. Okay, yes, that's good. And when I hung out with Jeremy last, he was wearing Atlanta Braves Crocs. I mean, it doesn't get any gayer. Dude, I have the Batman ones. I didn't. I mean, it was all a goof on me with our audience. Um, Atomic Lori, uh, who is our mod, she was like, you got to get Batman Crocs on Batman Day. I order them. They look dumb. I put them on all of twice. Once to look at them and go, I, I feel like an idiot. And then second, I walked around L.A. Comic Con wearing the Crocs. There is video proof. My audience made me do it. How 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 are they for walking around a con? I felt dumb. But Although like your feet were okay. Not, were your feet like how was the support? Like I, I still think I have better shoes. I mean, I don't know why people rave about crocs. They're so comfortable. Like there's only one situation I could see crocs being useful. If it's muddy and you're working in your garden and you can hose them off. To clean them in no other situation are crocs useful although i kind of think godzilla crocs would be cool if they, if they had godzilla heads <laughs> yeah that'd be kind of funny i uh, bought those shoes by the way i don't know i'll probably end up selling them or whatever uh dr Schlurpo for 9.99 what's my name you're damn right uh looking forward to meeting uh, you two and the gang tonight. I can't wait to meet you. Operation Outstanding in Field. Uh, hey, what's up, brother? He's flying out right now. He said he's watching Varsity Blues on the flight. San Antonio Classic. Excellent. I like Varsity Blues. Uh, Joe Chapman. Uh, need to know if Chris is wearing the back Crocs for $2. Uh, there, uh, I'll find the video if you want to play it. Uh, Quibbly Danger for one ninety nine. No, he's asking if you're wearing them now. No, no, I'm not. No, he's I'm not wearing even wearing cheap, pants. I'm wearing cheap Temu sandals that are more comfortable than the Crocs. So, and by the way, I got to show you something I just got. Yeah, Can yeah. I show you this? Yeah. I got, this is Film Threat, Film Threat Yoga Pants. Oh, nice. I ordered these $15 on. Oh, they're going to give you cancer. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to wash them before. Right but, on your uh, junk. You, <laughs> no, just upload a, you upload a graphic and they just repeat. Oh, that's awesome. And so you can get anything. I'm gonna get Alan Ng's face on a on a pair of yoga pants. That's what I'll get. That's just weird enough to work. Exactly. <laughs> it's got depends on the facial expression. Uh right. real men eat rare steaks. Uh quibbly danger for $199. Not true. Uh Alien Productions for one nine ninety nine. Hey guys, my channel just hit one thousand subs. Congrats! I remember when that happened for me. That was a big day. Such a big day. I ran up the street to the YouTube building and recorded a video in front of their sign because I was a mile away from the YouTube building at that time, working at Toyota in San Bruno. Just keep reading, Gary. I'm gonna. Yeah, just wanted to say thanks, channels like thanks, channels like you, motivating me to keep it, uh, keep making short films. And one day, making movies. Any advice for a future filmmaker? Stay awesome, y'all. Listen to DVD commentaries. In particular, Paul Thomas Anderson is very good. Steven Soderbergh is very good. There are w so many resources online. Um, 
walk before you run. I, I get a lot of filmmakers that are like, I'm making my feature. Why don't you make a short film? Make a one minute movie, then a five minute movie, then a 10 minute movie, then a 20 minute movie, then build up. So l- learn, take time and everything takes twice as long as you think it will. Uh, and watch channels like my film threat and film threat, our interviews channel and uh, film courage is good as well, but so many resources online, but listen to DVD commentaries like you would podcasts. You'll find the people that are really good. Tim Burton is not great. Sam Raimi is not great, but Soderbergh is really good. Um, there are other people that are really good. That's, that's my advice. So Watch the Lord of the Rings special features. Yes, all the special features. That movie, Lord of the Rings, was made able to be made the way it was because of color correction. Because of they shot at all hours and the, it was made in the color correction because the lighting was so off. They did a whole feature on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know who's involved in those uh, special features? Our good friend, Robert, Robert Meyer Robert. Burnett. Love that guy. Oh, right. my God. I'm not going to play the audio, but here we go if you want to see. So I walked around the con for about 10 minutes wearing those, and I felt like an idiot. I mean, they don't look cool, right? They don't look cool with pants on at all, too. Right. I mean, they don't look good at all. I was hanging with Alan. We walked. I just, my audience kind of made me do it. We're very democratic, you can see. Uh, we walked around wearing the Crocs. So you can stop sharing anytime. Oh my God. It looks like you're wa- walking around in high heels, dude. It looks gay. It looks super gay. Yeah. Uh, Operation uh, Outstanding Infield for four ninety nine says, debate whether The Rock is or is not of the last Bond film of Sean Connery, so to speak. Uh, yes. In my head canon, it is. Not, not never say never again. <laughs> Never say never again. Uh, Kim Bassinger and and her sweaty jazzercise. Uh, she's got like sweaty armpits in that movie. <laughs> um, that's what I remember. Adrian Curry, the great Adrian Curry. Oh, I left the super chat. It's so complimentary too. You know, she just loves us for $10. She said, today I learned I'm more of a man than Gore and Gary combined, as I have never seen Wicked because I'm not gay. Thank you, Adrian Curry. Oh my Checks out. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Absolutely. Uh, go follow her on Twitter. She does some live streaming, some very good I've live wa- streaming. Yeah. I've watched it. She's putting on makeup, yep. talking about Avon. Buy Avon. <laughs> From Adrian Curry. If you Adrian Curry. Avon, yeah. Whether you're a girl or you have a girl in your life, buy Avon from Adrian. Yep. Matthew Hammond for $2. Art the Clown going to the hood was amazing. There you go. Uh, Jediah Ben for four ninety nine. Chris, I got tickets to Skybound showing of Transformers 87 event and a panel at AMC CityWalk. There's a good part of town to stay. Where's a good part of town to stay? Uh, God, I would not stay in Los Angeles. I would stay Pasadena in Burbank. I mean, oh, Burbank, all, yeah. Good hotels around Burbank, or even Pasadena. You know, Green Tree Inn is the best place. You know, it's that's cheap. where I stayed. It's privately owned. It's not a, not a chain. I've recorded and, a couple of videos at the Green Tree. Green Tree. And you're you're close to everything, but you're away from the madness and uh, homeless encampments. Yeah, Green Tree's like basic hotel, like it's nothing fancy, but right. it's like you can walk anywhere in Pasadena, and it's and it's like a one of the rare places where you could just walk around in L.A. and it's safe. Not worry about fentanyl fentanyl zombies. Right. Yeah. No, Pasadena's nice. It's like a little yeah. oasis in the middle of shit. Uh, nobody could have saved Captain Marvel's writing, says Albert, not a retro. You are correct, Albert. Not going to argue with you at all. Thank you for the $2. Bubba Doom, four. $20 says never, ever, 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 ever forget those that ask for us to forget that what they've done to our families are punks. Curly hair, spitting punks. And that's to the people who want us to, like, get past COVID. 
I, I, as far as life, I've moved past it. I was ready to move past it after the first fucking day. Uh, it was the fact that I wanted to move past it and they wouldn't let us. And what I had to worry about more than our government was my fellow citizen ratting my wife out if she wanted to go back out. To, that's the only thing that kept us. Is like, we have to worry about the fucking rats. We have to worry about the fucking snitches, the bitches. That's what I had to fucking worry about. And so many people willing to do it. Now I'm not forgetting. Nah, that's good. I'll just remember to my dying day and pass it on to my children and generations to come. Uh, Dirt is King for $10. Transformers 1 suffered from being after uh, the rather poor Rise of the Beast, but it was the best film of 2024 in my humble opinion. Man, I've heard so many different views on that. I'm going to watch it. But I've heard shit. Chris liked it. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people liked it. Um, anyone heard, uh, Tim Dillon talk about his role in Joker too? Yes. I watched that clip. It was funny. It was hilarious. He talks about how other cast members knew it was going to be bad while shooting scenes. Uh, you could hear, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, like whispered something to Lady Gaga at the Venice, uh, film festival. And it was clear they didn't like it. Mm. Black cloud, nine ninety nine. It's a shitty movie. It, it's a fucking shitty movie. Don't like if people want to like really push the high art idea. Um, nice cope, but it, it's a shitty movie. That's all. So it's well shot. It's well shot, but the story is shit. Uh, Corey for five dollars. Hello there, guys. I'm worried we will get a lazy Stark becomes Doom instead of an actual Victor Von Doom in the suit and mask. Thoughts? Love y'all. Yeah. That's the thing. This was for spectacle. This this move was for spectacle and to get people interested and talking positively about the MCU again. So for a from a marketing standpoint, kind of a genius move. For a legacy um, longevity of your brand standpoint, it is at the best a stopgap. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Um, because eventually you're going to have to come out with another Victor Van Doom, and it's not going to be as special because you already introduced him. I mean, this is going to be the first, like, yes, there was the Fantastic Four movies, but this is Marvel, supposedly, Disney Marvel, introducing their best villain of all time for the first time, and it's, it's Robert Downey Jr., and you're going to have to do it again with somebody else. But you want to you know why this was the easiest way to go? Because they mm. still had to deal with DEI. Yeah. They still had to deal with DEI. And what's the only way that's excusable to get a, a white dude to play Doom? You bring Money? back Ro Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. You do it with somebody really established. Uh, that's how fucked they are. They can't be creative. They destroyed their own creativity. All these free-thinking artists who were the, the counterculture and the rebels... Uh, woke up one morning realizing that they were the man and they put a bunch of fucking rules on themselves to fight the man, but still become the man. And now they are not free to create anymore in an industry that's still swimming in money that has all the resources in the world and, uh, can fuck up a good lay pretty easily. Uh, Dan Vask for, 100 Brazilian pesos says, I can't tie my hair in a bun with just one hand. Hope you're happy. I'm immensely happy. You know, that 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 just made my day, Dan. That just made my day. Now you're just going to have to be a man. I don't know. You got to figure it out. Uh, Piston for six euros says, Frank Gore, I would like to thank you for recommending Super Slash Man, Superman which I went to see it with my mother who has never uh, never seen a Superman movie, and she loved it. That's awesome. Dude, I got choked up. I don't know if you saw it, but, man, uh, that movie is just, like, who he was, what he represented, his kids, how he tried to help the community, like, and there's technologies that are, like, that is moving forward toward being able to help people. Yeah, because um, of him. And I saw BTS footage from Superman 
78 and yeah, all the other movies I've never seen. I've never seen before. And it was very personal stuff. How he met his wife or I met his, well, his uh, first girlfriend, they, they didn't get married, but um, uh, first serious relationship on the set of Superman in London. And God, it's just, it's tragic. And the relationship with he and Robin Williams, when they showed so much of that, I don't think Robin Williams would have gone to the, the dark place he did if Chris was still mm. alive. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would have. He Their relationship was, they show them, I mean, they show also, I remember when Chris Reeve was at the Oscars. Oh, man. Like a year after the accident, he was at the Oscars. Yep. So it was all like, it's a, it's a great documentary. Um, I'm excited. And I'm, I'm also excited for the other film, or the other thing under the DC banner, Creature Commandos, which looks like an R-rated animated hard R and gory hard R squad. Yeah. I'm interested in it. And that comes out uh, December. Yeah, actually it, it doesn't look bad. That, that trailer was good. It's actually entertaining. I was, I was impressed. High frequency productions for nine 99. Hey guys, I'm doing a 48, 48 hour film project, et cetera. This weekend, I want to put some personal experience in to it, but avoid cringe Self insert any advice? Ooh, you're doing it this weekend. Uh, self insert. Uh, I, I, yeah, I would just say get that, it done, like it's a 48 hour film project, just get it done. It's not going to be about the story. I say keep something simple and relatable, but you know, it's about really the process it, and also working with people and problem solving. That's the purpose of that event. Not yep. to make, I've seen very few movies from those events that turn out. Well, the ones that do lean into humor and universal themes. Yep. But don't worry about self insert. You're overthinking. I did one in 72 hours and it was just about like, but when I was done, like I knew how to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's, a, it's, it's really a, a learning exercise. Yep. And then that so. film will never see the light of day. I might show it to Chris, make, make sure. Chris sit through it and just watch you suffer. Okay. Um, uh, the Grizzly for $10 says Alien Romulus isn't a good movie, but the fact that they're making a VHS copy of it is, uh, pointing to a revival to the VHS, much more the same as vinyl starting my VHS collection now before the price spikes. I, I think they're like cool for display. Like if you're displaying like as an art piece in your house, as a display thing in your house, they're great. Watching VHS sucks. It's not fucking good. It's not I knew a, when you talk about it's it. Not share, good. <laughs> share share my screen right here if you would, Gary. Yeah, this is a great idea though. I'm all for it. I love it. They, uh, I love this idea. I I love kind of retro media. Yeah. Um, I'm Gu- buying albums now. Gar- Guardians did this with a cassette. Like you can get the uh, Guardians soundtrack on a cassette. Like I'm not gonna get a cassette uh, player or listen to anything on a cassette, but it's cool to have. I think this is a great idea. You're right. I love it. Like uh, an album still can sound good. Yes. Yes. I, I have a, if you get a good turntable and you have a good system, I have my Atmos system. I was playing some soundtracks the other day. It sounds great. Uh, I'm going to show you something I picked up at the swap made. Just go off camera for a second. I got to dig out a record. Yeah, yeah. But like you, you throw this on your projector uh, for one, you'd have to have it like a CRT TV for it to look even halfway decent. It's going to look like shit on everything else. But the packaging is great. That's that's what we said about LPs too. Like the the packaging for for the for the record album, unbeatable, unbeatable. Uh, John Thomas, Gary, did you notice the banner stop page above the shrinkage headline about NDAs? Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that at all. Hang on. Let me let me go back to that. What was it? Uh... Hollywood, 20%. Hollywood production down. Where is that? Now I can't, hang on a second. Hang on. Da, 
it was deadline article. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so what does the banner say? No, mine says Gretchen Carlson and Julie Roginski on ongoing. Oh, blight of NDAs after Diddy. Oh, shit. Okay. Gretchen Carlson and Julie Regins Roginski on the ongoing blight of NDAs after Diddy, Weinsteins, and others. Interesting. I got this at the Rose Bowl swap meet. It's a. Is it a newer one or an older uh, one? A little newer. Does it have little... Chinese watch or water torture on the back? Does it have track eight? I remember. Look, I played this relentlessly when I was a kid. Yeah. Chinese water. I don't see it. No, they yes, took it. It's still on, here. It's still it's on, on there. Here. Good. Okay. The Chinese on side water. One. I, that and things in space. Yes. Yes. Creep so me so out. when we went trick or treating, every fucking house had this their speakers blaring outside, playing that all the fucking time. It's one of the greatest things Disney's ever produced. Yeah, so this definitely is newer than when I had it. I had this in the seventies, Gary. Yeah, dude, seventies. But they, they printed I, that in the sixties, I believe. Um, this has and, to be a newer issue. Yeah, it's good that they can't. The uh, I was hurt. I heard the Chinese water torture was taken off, but uh, that's uh, nope. the, it's on here. Yeah, it's on here, and it's just a drop on a guy's forehead, and at the end he goes. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But things in space is scary as hell because like an alien comes down and then eats you. Yeah, and it sounds like he's eating a carrot. Yep. Yeah, yep. it's it's so good. So picked it up. Just had to get it. So yeah, somebody pointed out the banner above the twenty percent shrinkage hot, uh, headline. I'm like looking at it now. Sean Diddy Combs arrest and Harvey Weinstein retrial put NDAs back in legal spotlight. It's a guess column. Yeah, I mean, I think how far can NDAs go? I think NDAs can protect a company, but I don't think NDAs can protect people from committing crimes. And exactly, what exactly is Diddy going to do to you from prison? I don't think he's getting out. Do you think, I I, I, I don't think he's getting out. Yeah, never, mm -mm. never. He is a sacrificial, uh, another sacrificial lamb or goat or whatever you want to call him for the system. And I don't think we'll find out shit other than he's going to jail. Yep. Uh... Tomok for 50. So Hollywood trying to pivot to profit. How soon do you think it will be before we get the announcement of 13? It was a French comic. I feel the need to point out that with it, uh, with a weird name. I don't know. That's, that's a really, uh, I would wait five years before you want to see anything you like ad adapted. Minimum. Minimum. We, we've got a ways to go. Uh, but that, yeah. Yeah. The I purge like is in progress. Yep. The purge is happening. Uh, Jimmy Drummer for 25 PLNs. Hey, guys. Chris, did you get a chance to check out the fourth Dune cut? My, for, my fourth Dune cut. I, I downloaded it, and I have not. I, I am literally, Gary, at screenings every night, screenings and events. It's award season, so I'm going to a You're at screenings event. every night. Uh, normally, <laughs> yeah, well, but, and now, but it's worse now. So I am going actually Friday night. I'm so excited. I'm seeing Doom Part Two with a Q and A with Denis Villeneuve, direct or uh, moderated by Michael Mann. Oh, so that's awesome! Wait. So I will get to meet him and talk to him. Um, they're making Dune Three, Doom Messiah next. I uh, there, it's going to have problems. It will have problems. Albert, not a retro for five Canadian pesos. Just have found out Kamala sent a woman to jail who uh, kept her kid home when she was sick from sickle cell anemia, as well as an innocent man on on uh, Delete Row. Yeah, she was a horrible. She's a fucking retard. She's I saw that news. I saw that news report about that woman whose daughter was sick. She was in school infrequently. And it's horrifying. She was basically uh, used her as as like a symbol. Like I'll put parents in jail if their kids are are absent. Like it was. She's I. I she's fucking awful. She's evil. She claim her claim to power is no fucking secret. When people say she blew Willie Brown, that's how she got in fucking office. It's not a joke. 
It's what happened. We knew it then. That that's that's old. That is decades old. I was there. I was in San Francisco. I saw her act. I can't believe how many San Franciscan politicians are in power right now. Are you fucking insane, people? Yeah. Are you insane voting in San Francisco politicians in any major federal office or major state office? Are you fucking crazy? San Francisco for a long time ran despite itself because yeah. it was San Francisco. It was the tech capital. There's old money there. Well, for America, old money there, new money there. It's like it's like mini Manhattan on the West Coast. It ran despite itself. And that's the kind of shit that uh, the, the current crop use. They attach themselves to something. They're like a they are a parasite. They attach themselves to entrepreneurial business that was working just fine on its own, regulate the hell out of it, suck all its blood out, and now you're left with, well, multiple examples of the zombie apocalypse that used to be thriving cities. And people are like, hey, well, she's just the answer. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I hate Gavin Newsom. He's better than her. I'd still hate it, believe me. But she's the worst of the worst. How many takes and script rewrites were involved with Keaton's endorsement? Uh, well, three, four, probably. Uh, Kate C A K A Snake Plushkin. Thank you for the five dollars. Uh, Desert Wolfskin for two dollars. Zachary looks like exactly like Reed Richards. He kind of does. He, you know what? He'd be a better Reed Richards. He'd actually be a pretty good Reed Richards, Chris. Zachary Levi, he'd be better than Pedro. With this hair is kind of salt and pepper now. I mean, they have to put it on the sides. He would be a good Reed Richards. Yeah. Yeah. Better than fucking Pedro Pascal, the, Ugh, yeah. the Latino actor who is white passing. I was told that. I couldn't fucking believe it when I heard it. When was there balance in Hollywood? John Milius was ex exiled after writing and directing Red Dawn. Watch the Milius 2013 documentary on Tubi. Um, it, it was more balanced than it is now, but like true balance. And Zachary Stephen said it's like maybe. Um, I would not say true balance, but they understood business at least. They understood business. Right. It was, I wouldn't say it was balanced ever. But it was more balanced than it is now. One of the, I mean, like, fuck. Every time, like, Hollywood was obsessed with Watergate. Watergate was like, if you said Watergate in front of a, like, a, even an old school Hollywood liberal, they jizzed a little bit in their pants because it excited them so much. Yeah. You know, they just, Watergate, that's where we stuck it to the band. Uh, you know, years later, we find out it was a giant CIA op, but whatever. Um, it, was, it was the J6 of its time. Yes, it was. Uh, when was there, uh, I read that one. One of them is getting their nails done. Is it QBG? Yes. Luis, how, how did you know? QBG went out with the girls. He, he deserves a girl's day too. Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. It's 11, 11 in my time, Gary. You know it's, what that means? Uh, what does that mean? You don't know what 11 11 is? Oops, sorry. I need to remove that. Um, if you see the first Joker movie, all of the clocks are at 11. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And it is something, if you look at Todd Phillips' Instagram and social media, he is all about this 11 11. It's like a positive mantra of 11 11. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't get it, but it's a positive mantra. It's kind of a thing, and all the clocks in Joker. Ah, so, just, just saying that. Just saying. We got a few more to go. Uh, of course. And we'll let you it. go. Uh, Le Garrett for $20 says, R Rings of Power is not even the top five on Amazon streaming. Nope. And it has fallen off the top 10 of Samba. Brightest Day Audiobook says, Met Sean Flannery, great guy, great and nefarious. Yes. Hail Sean Patrick Flannery, young Indiana Jones. Uh, Verdon Horrors for $5. Did you notice Keaton framed his video like the audience was a child? He had to bend down to talk to us like children. Yes, and he was talking to you like children. Because that's how he sees, that's how a lot of Hollywood sees you. It's like, don't you understand how much better I am than you? Because I can repeat somebody else's lines that they wrote pretty well. 
I have influence. I have power because I can pretend. We need to get back to like, I don't know. We we need more Elon Musk's. People who invent. Elon, is, he's great. What he has done, and he is all about problem solving. He makes politicians look as useless as they actually are. It, it, it's shameful. And I've seen him. I've listen to tons of interviews but it's really about what the government is bad at is capital allocation how are you spending money to solve a problem no one is worse at it than our own government that in disney is uh, also bad never watch boondock saints synopsis and why you love it uh seb's Durham for 1999 uh uh new england neighborhood uh Getting tired, a uh, couple of kids getting tired of seeing um, good people get, run, you know, just crime is run rampant. It's a superhero story. In a way, It's yeah. basically two brothers of the Punisher. But but also very influenced by Tarantino-type violence, stylized, you know. Like it's that. very and his- stylized, and they're anointed at one point. There's a lot of uh, Catholicism, a lot of Catholic themes in it. And, uh, yeah, it's 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 just it's very style it's very style it's very it's it came out in 2000 but like it it's a very 90s movie very that is 99 2000 something like that but uh it's it's you know what it is it's when movies were fucking cool it's yep. a cool movie um and it's not politically correct at all yep uh Mailman for ten dollars. Speedy recovery to Dane's uh, Dan's. Why did I say Dane's? Dane, it's better. His uh, spirit fingers. I'll be at the meetup to represent man buns in his honor. Hail! Uh, prepare for it to be cut off, sir. Prepare for it to be cut off. Uh, my second grade teacher confiscated my. Uh, bring on the bad guys. Oh no! I have since replaced it. Read my book Eden. Read my book Eden. A Glen Haven's Tale. It says Odinson 99M for $10. Uh, Corn Pop for $1.99 puts a director's chair. That's cool. Uh, grilled Cheese Warlock for $5. Part of me wants to support the appearance of Jeremy's Jeremy as a villainous man. I would love to push DC into making merchandise of him. That would be great. Thank you both for uh, inspiring... Uh, for the inspiration and hard work. We are celebrating three years as a podcast and a channel, having a blast. Cheers and hail. Also, which is your favorite Blade uh, film? One or two? Mm, Sons and Shadows for $10. Oh. Well, Tracy Lord, so I got to go one. Yeah, one, but two's a really <laughs> fucking good movie. I just bought the trilogy digital. You did? Well, yeah. uh, 4K, Blade is out in 4K. Yeah. So I got just, the I see sales. I see sales. I'm like, ah, oh, five yeah. bucks. Let's go. Great Wednesday FNT. Very informative. And both of your views of entertainment and uh, politics are right out of my brain. Thank you. Says cat G 3000 for $5. Cheers. Uh, corn pop has given this another director's chair and then one, uh, both for one ninety nine. Thank you very much. A homeless guy in Toronto, or I'll say it like they do there. Toronto, Toronto. Uh, built a house w- from pallets. It made the news, and he's getting job offers. I hope the government doesn't knock it down. No votes for you. Well, in Canada, they probably will, Albert. Albert. Um, but if he's getting job offers out of it, and he turns around his life, that's fucking fantastic because people are mostly good. Don't listen to the black pill. People out there, people are mostly good. They want to do good. Uh, Saley, I can't pronounce your last name. Sorry. So I don't want to butcher it. Will you guys be watching invincible season three? Eventually. Eventually I will. Did game of Thrones make it obvious? Holly did game of Thrones make it obvious? Hollywood was crumbling. Well, towards the end it did when they fucked up one of the best shows on TV and they definitely put some intersectional feminism in with Aria and just made her fucking just super Aria at the end. Yeah, that was, that was, in hindsight, Arya turned into a fucking Mary Sue. She didn't start out that way, but she turned into one. Uh, Hickory Chip for five dollars local, and she's not like that in the books at all. Uh, local woke bar was sending managers out 
to rat on other bars trying to stay open during early mid COVID-19 days also required Vax proof to enter that bar. I would never, I would never go in that bar again. I would never frequent that bar again. But I'm glad that, you know, some bars were open when gyms weren't. I'm glad you could swill down all that poisonous alcohol, but you couldn't fucking go, you know, jog in place for 30 minutes. Albert, not a retro for $5. I was a wooden music center. I was, I was, I have a wood, wooden music center. It looks like an older style radio, but a, had a cassette player on the side, a single disc DVD player and a turntable. Cheers. You know what I have? You know what uh, Diamond uh, Collectibles made, Chris? Mm, an I old, love an old timey. It was no, it was DC Direct. An old timey Superman radio. So it's a wooden oh. radio. It's a wooden radio that looks like one from the forties, and it's got a big, like a brass Superman logo on it. I'm looking at it right now. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, I remember those old, uh, like um, my grandparents had those tables that you'd lift up, and they. would I had the record player, not a cassette player, this Perfor even a track. I want one of those. I want one of those. Let me go to the Streamlabs real quick. Boop, ba doop, ba doop. Oh, fuck. Really? Why do I have to log in every time? This is stupid. Give me one moment, please. Hi, chat. Hope you're doing wonderful today. Hope you're doing wonderful today. Chris, do you need to go? Uh, eventually I'm just, okay. uh, I, I was going to share something with you. Share, share. I, I oh, can't with oh, the audience. we can't publicly share. Oh, well, we got two more and we're out. Jose A. Taco for $1. Anyone going to meet up, uh, want to eat a Mr. Juicy Burger at Mr. Juicy Burger place before the meetup. It's next to Rocky Robbie's around 530 ish. There you go. So Jose A. Taco is calling out to the fellowship. He's from, uh, San Antonio. Uh, cheers, mates. Happy New Year is back, says Dan Tatman for $5. We're happy it's back, too. We are happy it's back, too. Let me just refresh this real quick, and then we will uh, take off. Oh, and wait. you got the meetup. I wish I was there, man. I wish I was there. We got a few more here. Uh, UM536Vids for four ninety nine. Gary, if Rings of Power left you wanting Tolkien-style elf romance, check out Frarian Beyond Journey's End. Cheers. Demon Lord, what's up? You forgot to mention drag queen William Defoe. William Defoe. Yes. So William Defoe is a, well, he's gay. He's a gay detective who's, who's hunting the brothers, but learns to like them and everything they're doing. The cops love him, by the way. Um, and he has one of the best scenes and he wakes up with his boyfriend who wants to cuddle and he gets pissed. And he says, that's gay. <laughs> he gets, he slaps him. <laughs> it's so funny. And yes, he dresses as a woman in it too. And it's fucking hilarious. Willem Dafoe, it's one of his best performances. Is so fucking good in this movie. So you can't forget drag queen Willem Dafoe. Gary, is Jim Lee a horrible editor in chief for DC? Yes. I mean, just look what they've done under his reign. I think he, I don't think he's editor in chief. I don't think he's EIC. I think he's president. I think he's a symbolic president. A, a John, Jim Lee is a very popular artist that a lot of people like. I don't. I mean, I like his art. I think it's fine, but he's not my favorite. No. And he and he doesn't really produce a lot of work. Uh, still waiting for Wildcats number two that he did with Grant Morrison. Back in the 2000s, back in the early 2000s. Anybody remember that? We got Wildcats number one, and we never got another comic again. <laughs> Written by Grant Morrison. Uh, Chris Adams TV for five British pounds. I am ramping up another YouTube channel, uh, YouTube video. It's a lot of effort watching you two and your good content. Gives me energy, mainly coffee, but 2% you. Hey, dude, that's awesome. 2% us is awesome. Right, Chris? I mean, that's about yeah. our brain capacity anyway. At this point, true. No, that's that's good. No, it's fun making stuff. We we are in the middle of. Uh, we've been working on a. Uh, I haven't put out a video starting tomorrow. It will be two weeks, Chris, since I put out a video. Um, it's because we've been working on one for two weeks while I was gone. It's it's been a dry two weeks. You picked a good time to lay low, 
honestly. So I would love, oh man, I'm so excited for you to see, see this. I've seen half of it of Perry's finished work. He'll be finished tomorrow. We're going to do a premiere tomorrow. I'll give you, it, it'll be before open bar. Right. Cool. But, um, we're going to do a premiere and, uh, yeah, I got to go to Venom tomorrow. But um, we'll do a premiere. I'll be in the chat for the whole thing. It's looking like it's 40 minutes long. And the half I've seen is uh, Perry's best editing work ever. 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 I love it. Yeah. I yeah. I can't believe he makes me look so good. <laughs> what I gave him was he's so good at researching and finding clips on his own, dude you your videos are influential that montage of all the marvel writers saying they don't know the comics that made the rounds that woke people up that that may not be a good idea in the end yeah you have to like become familiar i was talking to ryan we, we, ryan and i are big harry potter fans right and we were talking about how much goblet of fire fucking sucks balls and it's because mike newell fat ass didn't read the fucking book you know, like Alphonse Cora, like a lot of people say that uh, Prisoner of Azkaban is the worst adaptation. I, I would agree with that, but it's still the best movie. It's still like Alphonse Cuaron, if I'm saying his last name right. That's a masterpiece of directing. It is so well directed. It's like a, it's a real movie. It's not just like, oh, we're just adapting a, a Harry Potter movie. It's it's artistic. It's very artistic and uh, and helped by a great John Williams soundtrack. But I fucking love the movie. Even though, like, the book is better. But, yeah, it helps to, to know that shit. And thank you, Chris. And, and listen, um, I'm not that good. Perry makes, Perry makes me <laughs> look way better than I am. But uh, thanks, Perry. Love you, buddy. Uh, first loved your channel. and uh, First loved your channel the last three years. Looking back, Game of Thrones Season 7 and 8 gave insight to what Hollywood would be like do you watch Peaky Blinders? Yes, I fucking love Peaky Blinders, and they're doing a movie for Netflix, and I can't fucking wait. Uh, Peaky Blinders is like one of my all-time favorite shows at this point. Peaky Blinders. All right. Chris, what do you got Chris, coming up, buddy? I got Hollywood on the rocks. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then uh, and I, uh, Troy Duffy from Boondock Saints will be on the show at two so an hour into the show he's coming on but that's fucking blast. awesome guys yeah. you need to watch that yeah I, we I, always do clips so if you can't catch it live we'll do clips but um yeah so i can't wait he was I, a bouncer the yes, dude was a bouncer a bar, at a bar at a, and that hurry winds me oh we will talk about that and that documentary is so good it's so good it, if you want to be a filmmaker watch that yeah. documentary Yes. Watch that documentary oh, and listen yeah. to Troy Duffy. Like this was an uh, ind indie dude, fucking just a bouncer at a bar, wrote a script that became incredibly hot. And uh, yeah, the, the Chris will tell you, the, he'll, he'll tell you his own story. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll let him do it. I'll let him do it. Ah, I love that guy. Cool. I even like Boondock Saints too. Well, there you go. It's in theaters in a couple weeks. I bought tickets. I think it's yeah. awesome. Uh, I don't know if I Sorry, I should have said single CD player, says Albert, not a retro. Thank you very much, Albert. Uh, the Sky Chief for $25. 1111 is um, Armistice Day, the beginning of the end of World War I, and the world found time for peace. November 11th, 1918 at 11 a.m. Cheers. Uh, I thought right. I thought 1111 was cowboy time for Mace Ventura, says Chris Adams TV. Maybe. Well, it's been co-opted as like a spiritual thing of like you're supposed to you know type it in places yes i don't know that's the way todd phillips puts it. chris what a, what a great interview you have lined up i'm so fucking excited about that i gotta we listen do, to it in the background yeah like, do a lot of these for like small yeah. releases so it's fun yeah dude watch it uh yeah i'm gonna um I'm going to see if any of the knuckleheads are still around town. Go hang out with them or maybe just ignore them and watch YouTube. I don't know what I'll do. Yeah. No, I'm going to uh, go over our video. So top 10 Disney Star Wars failures. Premieres tomorrow. 40 minutes long. Give uh, me a tease of the thumb. Oh, I, we don't have it. I can give you a tease of... Um, 
I can't. No, I want to. I want to save it. No, I'll oh. show you. I want to save it. It's. I. It's. I got to save it. I got to save. Oh, Perry's good. worked too hard on this, so you'll see it tomorrow in about twenty four hours. Um, he's he 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 got back to me. He's had. I've had so much fun working on this. This is like my favorite thing. Uh, he needed a little extra time, which he can always have. Um, and uh, I, I hopefully it's worth the wait for you. So, but uh, we're going to do a premiere. I will be in the chat for the premiere. I will be there. So uh, look for look for that to pop up tomorrow at some point. Uh, otherwise, we got Friday Night Tights with a very spooky special guest. Because this Ooh. is, well, half the team didn't realize when I said we're going to do the costume episode the Friday before Halloween. Thought, yeah. didn't think it was the Friday before Halloween. <laughs> Because <laughs> this so is the go party. to Spirit Halloween. What That's what I told for? him. I already got my costume. I could loan out a couple of costumes if I need to, because some of them are going to be here. We're going to do it for my dining room, which oh, is going to be God. very exciting. Uh, yeah, me and X Ray Girl, she's hanging out with us. She's like our kid came home from college for the next like three four weeks. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But yeah, uh, drunk three POs here. Talk to Jay a little bit on the phone, like we text. So Jay's here, uh, Ryan's here, Jeremy's here. Uh, 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 the the G and G crew, Beardo and, and his stick legs, his chicken legs are here. Um, uh, and uh, Krista Nova is here. She's awesome. I love Krista. Uh, and uh, some other special guests are going to show up at the meetup. Chris, we're going to miss you, but we understand you had another con to go to. Like I get it. You got this. Is like your busy, busy time of year. But, but I just want to let you know you're missed. Like, you're definitely like, missed. People people miss you, and we're going to call you and make, make you feel really bad. A lot of please. FOMO. Yeah. Uh, so the meetup is tonight, 7 o'clock, Ricky Bobby's. Uh, you can still RSVP, but if you can't, it's like 5 bucks. That goes to the bar, not to us. I, I will never, ever charge for a meetup. Ever, ever. Any meetup I'm involved in ain't charging. Because this is a thank you to you guys. This is the least we can do for... Providing my family, my friends with the greatest fucking job in the world. Absolutely. I'm so grateful to have this every day. Waking up to this every day is like a dream. It's like a dream. This is not something that was supposed to happen to a fucking former homeless drug addict felon retard. So uh, thank you guys so much. So I, I can't wait to see you guys. This is my favorite part of the gig is I get to hang out with the fellowship tonight. It's going to be so much fucking fun. So if there's a meetup in your area, try to go. We'll try to always make them free. We'll be uh, up north in a little bit. So maybe we'll try to do something then. Up north is Wisconsin. But in the meantime, uh, if you're here in San Antonio, see you a bit later. If not, Chris and I will be back next Wednesday. That's right. Take care, everybody. Oh, and thanks, Mods and Mod Rodics and everybody who loves Super Chat and Donation. Love you guys. Thank you all. Thank you later. all. Bye-bye.